PCL week three, day one. I am Rome DMV, and joining me on the cast today, you know him, you love him, the one and only Mick. How you doing today, man? I'm doing great, man. I'm just looking for a great couple matchups to really just paint into, especially when we see what we got lined up today. I mean, a lot on the table, especially looking at the seating, so with the splits gone so far, a lot just to provide, a lot to look at, and a lot to really just do out. Oh yeah, for sure. It's been so much amazing action. As you guys saw from the highlights that we just witnessed, man, so many close clutch plays coming in. And that last one, you know, casted by us too. So, you know, we got that little bit going there. So hopefully we'll be able to bring that same magic to this matchup, which is going to be the BGSU Falcons going up against Wright State Raiders. And man, this is going to be a good one. Yeah, it most definitely is. I mean, looking at the way we got these two teams lined up, I mean, looking at just overall fighting for a third place in their pool right now, just a lot on the table. I mean, looking at their division, looking at their pool, I mean, they had themselves so much pressure. They've had such a great season on both behalf. So, I mean, to look at what they have to bring to the table, what kind of promise they have to really live up to so far, I'm excited to see who can really set themselves up to possibly take down the Titans in the rest of their area. Oh, yeah, for sure. We all know this is going to be fun. And for those of you people that have not tuned in before, we've been talking about it in previous weeks. This is the first week that Control is going to be there. As you can see, Game 3, Gavutu Control. It's going to be here, and we're going to be seeing it no matter what. How excited are you about Control being thrown in here? Uh, I'm extremely excited, honestly. I mean, that's the only thing I'm really looking forward to. We've sat there, we've had two weeks without control so far. We really got to go ahead and get into those modes because, I mean, control has been a staple of Call of Duty, at least during the Cold War area, when I really hopped into the CCL with my first season. So I'm excited to finally see its return. I mean, in all the greatness that it is, sure, there's not as many maps as we expected to really bring, but honestly, regardless, the fact that the mode is here is going to be a wild card. For, I mean, really every single team in the league so far, if they really haven't gone ahead and really prepared themselves for it. Oh, yes, 110%. And, you know, if we're looking at these two rosters, you know, if you look at this one, how are they going to be performing on each individual map, each each individual mode, hard point, search and destroy specifically? We know if you're looking at search and destroy, this team in right state, they have not taken a loss in search and destroy yet. They're 2-0 in the maps in in the map. And that's, that's what you want to see, you know, is that consistency on the other side, the home side, BGSU Falcons. They're going to be currently 3-1. and one. So, I mean, when you're looking at it both teams are extremely solid in search and destroy but moving on to hard point that's where right state they've been struggling they're two and three in the hard points opposed to the bgsu falcons who are currently seven and three in hard points so man having that type of consistency coming out of bgsu do you think they have the advantage here I mean, quite also, I feel like BGSU just has the overall advantage because, I mean, uh, one fact that a lot of people aren't going to know for the likes of Bright State so far is that these past two weeks, they've had forfeited matches. And so they haven't really got themselves accumulated to the environment as much. They haven't really played as many games. They've got themselves handed a couple freebies here. So I'm hoping at least today in this matchup where things really start to pan out, where they really start to mean a lot more, that they can actually step up and say, look, we've set their schedule so many scrimmages up until this point to really compensate for that, and including the control pool as well that we're going to be prepared for this 110 percent especially looking at Gavutu. so many teams go ahead not for this map over like a tuscan so i want to see whether or not they can really have that assault rifle presence to make sure they can get themselves a series point possibly if you really get to that stage Oh, yeah. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at these two teams head-to-head -head right now as we can dive a little bit more in-depth in the stats and all that juiciness as we're going to be getting back-to-back -back Berlins. We already know that. So everyone likes Berlin. It's Search and Destroy Hardpoint. It doesn't really matter. It seems like people just like that map. So let's go ahead and look at this one. Season record, you can see both of these squads are going to be coming into this one. Three and one. We talked about the Hardpoint and the Search and Destroy records right there. And hey, at the bottom, you saw it, man. Zero, zero. Everyone is coming in with with a clean slate in control and that is the third map it's always going to be the momentum swing map in the series and that's what i'm so excited to see here today yeah most definitely is i mean with only one being in the pool i mean every single of them over we're going to see twice and it really goes the distance but control that's going to be that one kind of sway point is where you see who goes ahead gets the advantage finds himself an extra round to really just buy themselves some time whether or not they really don't struggle in the hard point or the S and D, go ahead and make that compensation there. If you can step up to the control, if you're a little bit more prepared than the rest of these other teams, you can really stand out in that one department alone and really just give yourself that safety net to be working with. But I mean, overall, with these two teams, looking at them, they've had themselves a great season so far, especially for likes of Wright State. For this being their first season here, I'm really impressed with the way they're looking so far. 
Oh yeah, you know, anytime that you're coming into it as a new squad when they haven't been it in previous been there in previous seasons, you definitely want to leave your mark early and come out strong and they've been able to do just that. Yes, they haven't been facing the stiffest of competition, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. You still got that 3 and 1 record, so you just just got to keep on building off of that. And hey, shout out to Wright State right now coming in hot. And then on the other side, Bowling Green, if you look at this year compared to last year, this is a great start for them 3 and 1 right now. They're trying to keep the ball rolling as well. This is really going to be a decisive game right here for where these two teams end up for the rest of this season. Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to really who comes out on top because, as I said earlier, they're fighting for this third seed within their pool because the other two teams that they have both been beaten by, that one loss on each side hasn't been to the same opponent, but it's been to the same kind of relevant division of opponents, just the Titans in their area. You have the likes of Akron, and you have the likes of Buckeyes Cod, two massive, massive players when it comes to being around in this pool. So it's understandable that they can't really stand at those guys just yet, but to go ahead and get themselves to really compete for the stage, it's going to really just turn the tides so of who can really stand out and possibly have some kind of a revenge tour later on in the season. Yeah, and speaking of standing out, let's go ahead and take a look at the roster so we can spot these eight players and figure out exactly which one of these eight are going to be standing out for their respective squad. As you can see on the side of BGSU Falcons, they've got Evade, Solar, Apollo, and Hayes. Now, Hayes is the one returning member for this BGSU Falcons squad. So what do you think that exactly means uh, for this team coming into this matchup? I think it's going to be really great for him. I mean, because Hayes was their captain last year as well during the Cold War season. So sure, you could get yourself a new roster, but Hayes already knowing the kind of accumulated space of making sure how to allocate responsibilities, make sure everybody's really just doing their due diligence and just biting into their roles as best as they can. I mean, with BGU having a fairly, I'd say, average season last year, they can definitely go ahead with that experience now behind their backs. It's going to really show a lot of volume if they can really step up to the plate and find themselves some really good rounds. Oh, yes, for sure. And as you guys can see, man, this squad, if you look at BGSU, they have two seniors, a junior and a sophomore. So with Solar and Apollo being their seniors coming into this squad, they have, you know, a lot of a lot of experience, if you will. I'm guessing my guess is that they've been playing Call of Duty much longer, uh, you know, than uh, you know, just this one year, even though Hayes is the only member, I'm pretty sure that Solar and Apollo should have a whole lot of experience uh, being seniors in college. So, you know, coming into this, they're trying to leave their imprint because, hey, this is their one chance to do it. This is senior year, baby. Oh, most definitely is. So they want to get out with a bang, at least in if they don't have themselves a championship run, they definitely want to make sure to get to that split too, have a pretty good standing there as well. But I mean, we've mentioned BGSU enough. Let's move on to Wright State, the newcomers here in the CCL, a team we haven't seen yet before, including the likes of Neptune, UT, Germ, and Reich. I mean, that's honestly, we haven't really seen enough out of them yet, but this is going to be their spotlight tonight of whether or not they can really step up, find themselves and say, look, we're on stream, baby. It's our first year. This is our debut right now as far as everybody else is concerned, and we really got to go ahead and make sure make it explosive. Oh, yeah, and my eyes are going to be on the player Neptune. He's going to be a freshman coming in, so anytime you're the lone freshman out there on the battlefield, we want to see how you're going to be performing. You know, we got to see if the nerves are going to be getting the Neptune. So I think that we are going to be good to go very shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be hopping into BGSU versus Wright State. This one is going to get very, very hot and heavy extremely quick because we're going to be going straight here to Berlin, baby. Oh, most definitely. I mean, we're already kind of expecting Berlin the map pool. We've seen it so many times. Players love it. Some players might not like it as much, but they still enjoy it to some extent because it's just such a staple. It's very easy to get accumulated to, and you see so many open lineups with these assault rifles to really go ahead and have their spotlight. So I'm really excited, especially for the likes of Hardpoint. You already saw in the clips earlier. We had ourselves a banger matchup when it came around to Berlin last week. I want to oh, see yeah. if we can follow suit, and we can go ahead and double down on that and see these two teams fight it out to literally the very last second. Oh, yeah. And shout out to Apollo at BGSU in the chat immediately. He said, I'm not a senior. I'm a freshman, too. Letting us know, listen, I'm some new blood as well. I'm going to be here for a while. Shout out to Apollo, man, <laughs> making his name known. Yeah, so, I mean, Paulo, if he's already in chat, obviously he's going to be watching the to some extent to see whether or not he can perform or not. And it all comes down to that alone. Just finding this opening point, finding yourself going ahead and getting a strong start and hard points alone because s &D, some people like it, some people excel in it, some people really don't. So it all comes down to whether or not the momentum can follow or whether or not we can see somebody have such a dominant performance on these hard points to just go ahead and double down because we see now with control introduced into the pool now, you can't go ahead and rely on hard points for an entire series anymore. You've got yeah. to find 
yourself some variety. You've got to make sure you can just excel in all fronts so far. So that may twist up alone a lot of the results we could go ahead and look at, and I'm hoping to bring it to that map five, at least today, because we haven't seen a single desert siege yet. And quite honestly, with me and S&D and my relationship with that mode, I'm a sniper myself, and desert siege has been the MVP in terms of sniping. It's, I mean, along the likes of Berlin, which we don't see nearly as much, but we're at least seeing it now in Hardpoint as we already see that first point up and available. Oh yeah, and you can see everyone's gonna be coming in. Subs are gonna be flying. Evade's gonna be trying to win the one, isn't gonna be able to take him out. So. Right State able to get some nice early controls. The kill feed is going their way. Most definitely is. You can already see the scoreboards going their way as well. I mean, having just a really good hold here, able to go ahead and find some aggressive corners to be peeking out, but you've got to have those SMGs make the break. And you can already see BGSU making it there. Evade with the double, so that's going to be a great little way to go ahead and get yourself onto the field. A great way for BGSU to get themselves on the site. Get a couple seconds here with only 20 remaining, and you found yourself looking for a break. BGSU has to look for the rotation now, while Wright State's probably going to beat them to the cut. Yeah, it looks like Neptune, he made the very early rotation, and he was able to get the rotational kill onto Evade, so they're going to have complete control of this hill when it pops. Even though BGSU were able to clean it up, get a whole lot of scrap time, get actually 30 on the board, which can be massive, we got to see how well they can break this one we all know how crazy things can get at this point right here almost definitely the mail room i mean there's so many levels to it you can have players up there allocated to the stop staircase you get a players there on the down on the bottom you gotta have players really everywhere to cover each other while still holding that time as well you can already see germ making a pretty aggressive push there able to go ahead and hold down side a little bit longer allocating his space i'd say fairly appropriately getting outside here and there and then getting back on but when you're going ahead and you're up in a 1v4 scenario, you're not really likely to go ahead and pull out that scenario. So, honestly, not too many scratches there, not too many dents really in the record just yet. But Wright State holding themselves down, having 35 points on the board. But BGSU now catching the rear and at the site once again, just playing things slow and steady, finding themselves saying, it's okay, give Wright State a little bit. We make a breach, we make a hold, and then we can find ourselves all that spare time in the end. They're just going to be ready for these rotations once again. Yeah, and this is now two hills in a row where BGSU are going to be able to get the final break and get all the scrap time. And as you guys can see, it is allocated to a very nice amount. It's going to be a 20-point lead heading into P3. Here we go. This one is going to be very electric. It's going to be starting out because guess what? Right State, they've got the spawns, but it's going to be BGSU pushing them out. This lone player is going to be Neptune. He's going to be the only one alive. BGSU have taken control. Yeah, Wright State still has the spawn, so they're just going to go ahead and make sure to make the most of this answer, quite honestly. They've set themselves up pretty significantly for this point alone, but you just see BGSU able to hold it down very efficiently, holding the right angles, being able to watch a window. You see Apollo here on the edge, just right by the door, grabbing a double near there earlier with Neptune, trying to make an exchange. But, I mean, BGSU has to run a little bit further, but, I mean, it's not going to matter all that much if you see Wright State just not really fracking out, not getting themselves onto a site just yet. But as I say that, they find themselves finally a break, get that 4K, get themselves on the side, but the glide bomb coming through is not going to be enough to really close anybody out, but it's going to be enough to create that pressure, let Wright State continue these kills here, these frags, find the rear end at this time, and start looking at these rotations, because they got three seconds left, and it's moving on to P4 where that train yard is, and that one we always know is going to be a money hit. Neptune was 5-1 and one at P2. We are now at P4. He's 9-1. and one. He hasn't died. He's still on a four streak. Germ, as we're on with him, he's on a three. He's going to tie up Neptune. Let's see who's going to be able to keep this one going. He's, his streak is going to be ended now i mean i want to hop on with neptune and see what exactly he's able to do right now playing his life extremely well he's going to be peeking through the windows right now okay he is just playing these rotations so so well finally is going to get picked off as he was playing for those streaks and now it's going to be in the hands of evade he's going to be over here at the back he's going to be able to clear out one but finally gets taken out bgsu with a 37 point lead this one is very highly contested but right state yet again they're going to be clearing them out they need to convert this into some time yeah, they most definitely can, and I think they most definitely will. You can see the spawns already right state being set up for this train yard most significantly and having that advantage. Just as soon as they went ahead and got wiped out, BGSU made somewhat of a push. They got the kills off the ARs, but they didn't go ahead and be able to clear out that space just yet. They couldn't close in the distance. They couldn't go ahead and get themselves closer on site and even slipping out those spawns. So you already see right state ready for it, saying, look, now that we have so much time, we can just allocate one player. BGSU is going to go on the rotation. But, I mean, BGSU is here with the app, so they're on the site. They're here with the kills as well. Only a 15-point disparity so far, but if they can keep up the slam power like this, 
it's not going to matter all that much. Oh my goodness, it is absolutely disgusting right now. VGS, you are able to do on this P5. We know how hard it can be to rack up hill time, but they're doing just that. And man, they now have a 30 point lead before this rotation is ended. And hey, we got to see if Wright State are going to be able to come in, burst through the doors, and make a play happen. But I mean, right now, it's just few and far between when it comes to what Wright State have been able to do. Finally, they are going to be able to get control. VGSU, though, they're coming in. You can see them swarming like bees they're going to be coming in on the hive that's going to be three down and i'm pretty sure bgsu they should be able to get this scrap time oh they most definitely could they're going to find themselves the last four seconds not too big of a differential at this stage when you've already found yourself a 30 point lead but you want to make sure to make that sting a little bit more so you want to find an even larger advantage and as you can already see they trying to push onto that side he finds himself well gets a second and can really close things out and empty up that space Big time as we are going to be on with Apollo currently what 10 and 11. This one's going to be contested, but he's going to be able to take out one. Turns and burns two. Third one coming up the stairs. Not going to be able to take out UT as UT right now 6 and 17 was able to find that kill, but does need to keep this up for his squad. He's got to pick it up because I mean, at one point he was 2 and 10. I didn't want to point it out, but hey, you got to start finding some kills where you can to help out your squad because a lot of them they're doing their job. You look at Germ 20 and 14, you look at Neptune 14 and and six they are absolutely going off for their squads they just need a little bit of help to get back in this one yeah they most definitely do i mean honestly just gotta play things a little slower i mean just the way things are going out right now they just gotta go ahead and allocate we are on with UC is he's gonna be able to take one out through the glass <laughs> That's a nice pick right there, and hey, able to get this early time fuck? right now for this right state squad hello, yet hello, again. Testing, but testing, man, a 60 point deficit testing, right testing, now is BGSU testing, 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 trying to come testing, in and testing, make some testing, plays testing, testing, happen. Testing, testing. It's going to be Hayes. He's going to be the one picking up this time before he gets dropped. German and Neptune take out two, and they're going to be controlling the mail room. But for how long? It's going to be Solar trying to contest right now. He is able to take out one. He's going to be looping around, looking for two. Doesn't want to contest just yet, but not able to find Rick as Rick is going to be frying him off of that heady right there. Right State right now holding true on this last one. But, oh, man, looks like BGSU finally yet again are going to be wiping them out at the last second to try and fight for this scrap time. Yeah, they most definitely will. You can see right State just trying to make themselves relevant at this point in the game. BGSU find themselves a pretty massive lead. I mean, it's only sitting at 60 points or almost 70 at this stage, so you're not really too concerned. It's only one site in itself, but I mean, things are getting out of control because you start entering these in-game stages. I mean, you get to that 200 threshold, you find yourself sitting at 50 seconds, and that's all being able to cash in on one site. Especially that train yard, knowing it's going to be a money hill. You don't want to let the rotations fall into your disadvantage right there. So you can already see everybody trying to go ahead and play a little bit of a roundabout. Right set makes some great picks on the left and onto the right. It would go ahead and just really move around, but he's made. Having a great job overall so far to really get themselves on this point. Yeah, and your name wouldn't be Evade if you didn't have movement like that as he's juking, shucking, and jiving. He's going to be dipping and dodging. And finally, he's going to get taken out by Rick. My goodness. This guy Evade right now, 22 and 16 for this BGSU squad. He is trying to put them on his back, but it's really been a well-rounded effort for them. You know, when the highest player on your team has 22 and the lowest has 14, that's going to be good for your squad. That's a well-rounded effort, and that's the great, the exact thing that you want to see in week three of the CCL. <laughs> Yeah, most definitely will. I mean, already just finding a start like this, able to go ahead and get some momentum, really get themselves on the board. I mean, it's not a massive leap by any chance, but I mean, when you see a bay with that striping strike, this could be a great way to settle things down, clear up that train yard, and just go ahead and open up so much space to be really dealing with the rest Ooh. of the team. Unless you have Germ there, able to go ahead and follow through. The rest of the team is right state already on site, making themselves a shove. They're going to go ahead and get these spawns as well, because you can already see in the back, hey, just holding things down. They would find one kill. Looking for the second. Find the trade, though. So both players going to end up following. Right State still in a 70-point deficit. And it's only still on P4. This train yard is absolutely massive. BGSU can really set themselves up. They just got to find the closure. Oh my goodness, Evade right now. I'm loving his movement. This guy, he plays on some super sense right now. As they're able to take out three, make that four. This train yard's gonna be theirs. Man, oh man, they are the little engine that could. Only 30 points away now as this kill feed is all orange, ladies and gentlemen. BGSU, they're only 24 away from pulling it off. 
Yeah, so, I mean, everything they're really going to right now is just looking really good. Just going to go ahead and get themselves almost 21 more seconds. I mean, that's really not that much to ask for, especially on a site like this in the right in the middle of the map on P5. It's so contested. You find yourself so many lineups for all these AR players. You go ahead and have the outside leniency instead of Neptune, who's going to be using that AR on site. But it all comes down to whether or not they can really get the trade or not they can really just hold this down. And as you do see right there in the middle, able to go ahead and get it to Peach, find themselves a little bit of clearance. But Neptune wants to go ahead, push. You can see on the side, try to find the right angle with these BGSU players still contesting right safe finally get the right hand find themselves just getting a little bit more time with 30 seconds left we still see BGSU close this out it just comes down to whether they can test long enough yes and now if you're right state you have to start thinking about old hill and new hill you have to think about both with only 20 seconds remaining yes they can still win if they cap all that time but you have control of it for now you need to be fighting for the spawns and it looks like right state have done just that they're going to be spawning up at this P1, and they're going to be trying to lock it down while still contesting, making sure BGSU aren't able to finish it off. So now it's going to be the hold from Wright State and the break from BGSU. Which one's going to be better as Evade's coming around the corner? He's going to get shut down by Germ. This Germ is going to be dipping and dodging. He's going to dip on out of there, resetting, and I like the play coming out of him, playing the outer time, playing his life, calling his teammates out, but he's oh. going to get taken out. Evade met him back on the revive. He came oh. right back. Evade's coming through, takes out you and this is the evade show ladies and gentlemen as they are five points away from cleaning this one out yeah they most definitely are they have themselves a great setup so far i mean they're only the only last couple seconds nobody's gonna contest them on the side so far we're gonna see the falcons closing out that first round able to find themselves the first map here in the series closing out a pretty convincing hard point we saw a couple moments here and there where things looking a little rocky but for the most part, just having a fabulous start. And I'm going to be honest, I see why BGSU coming into this one, they're seven and three in hard boy. This evade guy is absolutely insane. You see the damage, 3,600, 500 more than anyone else in the lobby. The guy was an absolute unit coming into this one. Wow, what a performance out of him. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, finding so many kills, finding so much pressure onto these players, able to go ahead and clear out these sites time in, time out. You need a player like that. You need a presence like that continuously. And even then, on Search and Destroy, knowing they're going right back to Berlin, you need to kind of have those plays over and over and over again and have that persistency as well. And that's going to take you that much further. Yeah, now we're going to be heading up to Berlin. Same map, different mode. This time it's going to be Search and Destroy. Now coming into this one, Wright State, they have not taken a loss in Search and Destroy yet. They're 2-0. and oh. While on the other side, BGSU, Bowling Green State, they are currently 3-1, and one, so they have bled just a little bit in Search and Destroy. So will this be an upset situation here for Wright State? Because right now, BGSU, they've got all the momentum. Yeah. Yeah, they most definitely do. I mean, already, as I said, they find themselves going right back to the same map, going into Berlin, knowing the power of the assault rifles on that map. I mean, you go ahead and just find those long-range encounters, really double down on those, clear out a lot of space on S&D, where you find yourself only living once every single round. You can definitely buy that time. You can definitely play out the rounds. You can definitely make it as slow as you need to, because at the end of the game, the S and D or the SMGs are going to get inside. They're going to get really, really aggressive, and you just want to go ahead and space them out. And honestly, with how massive this map is, how much outdoor space there is to counter that, it's not that hard of a setup. Oh, yeah, for sure. And hey, this is the one map where I always see if your team's really about it. You know, simple as that. That's what I like to call it on offense. If you go to A, you're ready for that action. But if you go to B, you know, you're just playing the safe game. You're playing the, the bread and butter play, you know, plan it for your spawn and, and back up and try to play your life as long as possible, which, you know, nothing's wrong with that. But hey, listen, I like going to war, man. Take it to A, go to get, let those guns blaze and, you know, try to win those 50 50s, especially if you're coming off a hard point like this. I'm expecting BGSU to at least try A a couple couple times. Yeah, I'm expecting right set to go ahead and play the counterplay. Go towards that B side. Go towards docks. Bite out that space as much as they can. Create as much space as possible between them and BGSU to make things a heck of a lot easier. But it's, before we even get into that, we got to go ahead and look at the scoreboard once again for the last map, and which was only there for about a split second. But you know what happened. You saw what we all sat there and lived through it and witnessed it ourselves, and we cast it as well. So as we go ahead and start moving to this S and D, we're going to have a little bit of a cinematic flavor once again to set us up for this map. S and D, the one more map we got before we go right into the grand premiere of Control. Not on the same map as well. We're not going to see Berlin that many times, but we at least get to see it twice as we see the closure here on this boat. 
Oh yeah, precisely. And you know, hey, listen, I just want to see if WSU, if they are going to be able to come back swinging right here on a mode that they have not lost yet this year, this season. Who is it going to be that's going to be able to step up from this squad? Hey, listen, I, I spoke about it. Neptune, the young gun, he was double positive for a good amount of time. I saw everyone on his team had 23, 22, and 21 deaths while well, he had nine and he had 19 kills at the same time. So, you know, he is def he was definitely performing very well, playing his life very well and that's what you want to see out of a young gun like that yeah you most definitely do I mean already finding yourself so many kills going ahead having that momentum just as a player alone I mean it really sets up a huge precedent whenever it comes around to this SMD because you want to be that slayer you want to create that space and even then knowing that space really just runs that much further away when you know that nobody's respawning you can just go ahead and say all right well he's taken care of now it's a 4v3, now it's a 4v2, and if you get those streaks, they mean that much more in this mode alone. When you get that intel, when you find yourself getting a kill with that, even just getting the damage, that has a free push through for the rest of your squad if you're going for a retake or if you're going for a bomb site, and you know somebody's already allocated there. Oh yeah, now like, looking at this one, man, if you're looking at this, BGSU, they are the home team here. And, you know, Wright State, they are the away squad. So I want to see who's got the home field advantage, man. If you're in the chat supporting BGSU, just go ahead and put a B. And if you're supporting Wright State, put a W. I want to see who's supporting who in the chat because I see a lot of people chatting to each other. But I want to know exactly who's got the real home field advantage because, you know, sometimes you go to a stadium, but it's filled with the away team's crowds just because they're the more popular team or something like that. So I want to see what the crowd's looking like tonight, man. I want to feel the energy. Yeah, I most definitely do as well. I mean, we've got to go ahead and see really what's going to go ahead and throw down because at this stage, Wright State needs more of that support than anything else. they got to go ahead and tie up the series. They can't let the S&D really run them over because, as we said earlier, Wright State found themselves two freebies over, these pa over this past week. So they can't really have themselves too much of an easy time tonight knowing that BGSU is really stepping things up saying, look, we got to see whether you can actually hold down the position that you've got. We're going for a third seed fight here tonight, and we really can't be messing around with this. It all comes down to whether who's the better one of you and I, and it all comes down to whether or not you can go ahead and clear things out in S&D, because we hear it time in, time out. S&D wins championships, but it also comes up to the lead up to where you get there as well. So, so we already see hard point kind of being in favor of BGSU here, which is a little concerning. You oh, only yeah. have one more hard point for the rest of the series. It all comes down to whether you have prepared yourself for control and you know once you go to a new space as well in the S&D, if you have yourself a great start here, you know you can double down. Oh, yeah. If Wright State are able to start to get some momentum here in a mode that they're undefeated at, this might be able to be where they can start to build that momentum. And as you said, control, it's uncharted territory for both of these squads. So who's to say who's better at it? This might be a 2-1 at the end of the control in favor of Wright State. We just have to wait and see how hot are they going to be able to come out here. And let me be honest, right now, the entire stadium it is white and green. It is pretty much filled with Wright State in the chat. Shout out to the Wright State Raiders. You guys came in deep for this away game right here, man. BGSU, I'm, lo I'm looking for the support, man. I'm, I'm looking for it right now. It's, it's just not there in bulk, man. Shout out to Wright State. You guys are definitely here in the chat supporting, man. You guys, you, 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 they might need it, man. You know, down 0-1, they got to win this search and destroy, in my opinion, to try to get that momentum back in their favor. Oh, they most definitely do. I mean, seeing how they performed already, they found themselves a lot of good frags in that last round. I mean, they went ahead, held out, but I just don't think the rotations were there. They were there at the front end every single time, and they just went ahead and got broken down by BGSU. They didn't really hold out too much defense. They found themselves a lot of good time just kind of roaming about the map, getting the good setups, getting the better spawns. But whenever it came to a re-break, whenever it came to breaching right back in, it just felt a tiny, tiny bit lackluster. So it's not miles of a differential by any means necessary. Right State can still put themselves into this game, but the fragging power just has to be a little bit more aggressive. It has to be a little bit more over antsy. You've got to find those first bloods here, and you really got to run away with it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you said that Hayes is the leader, is the captain, per se, of this BGSU squad. So my guess is that he's going to be the shot caller in game as well when it comes to this search and destroy. So do you think that uh, that on this specific map, do you think that he's going to be able to, to keep this team under control uh, when they have already taken a loss in search and destroy? Like they're not flawless in it, you know, straight up. They're just not flawless in it, even though they have taken an L2, you know, pretty much one of the top two teams in this pool. Uh, at least that's the way it's looking like. Um, I mean, they still have taken an L in search and destroy at the end of the day. So do you think this guy in Hayes, do you think he's going to be able to learn from that mistake, come in here and try to take this 2-0 advantage? Do you think that's going to be possible? I want to hear your predictions at the end of the day. 
I mean, I think with both these teams having a pretty good record when it comes around to search and destroy, I think it's it just it comes down to around 11, honestly. That's what I'm hoping for. But it also comes down to who really wants to throw a curveball there into the wind. Who really wants to go ahead and find a left hook instead of a right, regardless of your dominant hand. I mean, who's going to go ahead and switch things up the most? And I think our sniper rifle could definitely do that job. I mean, we mentioned it earlier. Snipers are really prominent in Berlin and Desert Siege, but... We just haven't seen very many of those in those lower seedings just yet. So I feel like once we go ahead, figure this out right so far, I mean, right state, if they can bring a sniper out, if they can go ahead, change the tide, change the pace of the game with something like that, they could definitely find themselves a crazy setup. And you can already see the automaton getting stationed up. Don't see those one-shot machines just yet, but still, having the momentum, having the antsiness, and having that leverage on that higher ground could definitely do some work. Oh man, it's going to be a 2v1 over at the B-bomb site, but it's going to be Evade that they're going to need to take out over there if they want to get this down. They're trying to plant it right now. Evade is going to be able to spot one. Evade gets two. And is he going to hop on the bomb immediately? No, he's going to rotate around. He understands the position. He understands that the last two players are going to be in the back. And this is exactly what you want to see. Third player going to be dropping. Last one's going to be UT as he's going to be doing a loop to loopsy right now as he might be able to spot Evade and this might actually be a winning play. If one player hops on the bomb, he might get perfect timing. Able to take out one. Now he just needs to dip and dodge out of there. Here we go. You got to win this 1v1. This is the one that matters. He wins that one, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's oh. just a one. Is he going to be able to clutch up this 1v3? 15 seconds remaining for him. He's got to be able to kill him and defuse the bomb. Ladies and gentlemen, Yutzi, he's in the corner. He's going to be able to spot him. And he's going to oh. be able to land the headshots. Yutzi with the 1v3. Coming in for right state. Coming in hot with the 1-0. And I talk about momentum, I, I talked about starting off strong, and there it is out of UT, finding the frags, finding the kills, finding the round for his team, putting themselves in an advantageous spot for the rest of this entire series, or at least for this map alone, and that's a great way to open things up. You have the rest of your team riled up off that, saying, let's go, man. Let's go ahead and double down. We're now on the defending side, sure. But so long as we can just bring that aggression, go ahead, find some alternate route to really just put the pressure onto them, we're not going to be concerned about that at all. Oh, precisely. And hey, I said BGSU. My guess is they might go to A, try to flex their muscles. It looks like that round might have put them on their heels because they're going straight to B. They're going to go straight up with the bread and butter, ladies and gentlemen. That name is directly in line, but not going to be far enough. Unfortunately, looks like Solaris, he's, Solar, he's going to be able to put this bomb down for their spawn. And I mean, as long as they play their lives correctly at this point, it doesn't look like any sneaky business is going to be happening. But as I say that, Yutzi, you can see that player number four. He's going to be going along the train tracks, hitting a big flank. I believe that is definitely going to be the most valuable player in this round as Neptune is able to drop Hayes. I want to hop on with UT and see what he's going to be able to do. I mean, honestly, he's got to go off once again. I mean, you already see that bomb down. You already see the, the time ticket. You got to go ahead and find yourself the pressure. There you can go. UT and Reek both finding themselves one, respectively, and makes it now a 3v1. Apollo's got to pull out that same kind of magic we saw to UT in the last round, but I don't know if he can pull it through with everybody coming in from every single angle. You go ahead and find yourself six feet under, and you find another round for the likes of Wright State. UC's the MVP right now. He clutched the 1v3 on the offensive side and then coming in on the defensive side, he hit the big flank. I saw the player creeping and he was able to pick off the player in the back of the spawn. That's the most important thing because once you kill him, you can get a clean pinch and that's what they did. They came in and swarmed around them, choking them out. And now they have a 2-0 advantage. Coming back to this offensive side, do you think they go A or do you think they're going to go with what's already worked to B? Honestly, these two teams are really just love and be. I mean, I think it's just muscle memory at this point. If they go ahead and find themselves going to A, things are going to be a little unorthodox element. You can already see BGSU making some pressure through A because you just got to have that default. But, I mean, once again, you already see the bomb going over towards B. Right set has won themselves two rounds on B site so far, regardless of what side they're playing from. I don't see why they will really want to fix it up just yet. So we are on with Neptune right now, currently 3-1 and one for this right state squad. Needs to sniff out these players that are going to be coming in on the flank. This could be a massive pick. He did not spot either one of them, but he's going to be able to lose this one. No, as Solar coming up huge, picking off Neptune. That was major. But it is going to be Reich. He's going to be able to pick off the one. Is he going to be able to get the trade? Yes, he is. Picking up the two-piece of his own. Now it's going to be a 2v2 situation. It is going to be this player, Yutzi, with the bomb in hand. And A is going to be free plants for him. He doesn't know it, of course. But, hey, we'll see if he's going to be planting this one. Because if he does, it looks like this player in number three, Reich, he is spotted out. And he's going to get taken out. Now it's going to be all up to Yutzi. You clutched a 1v3. Now you got a 1v2. You planted it for lobby. Here we go.
Slow and steady is the name of the race right here. Just comes down to when you hear that bomb ticking down, you got to find the right setup. You got to find yourself the correct positioning. And knowing UT's that last man alive, I mean, these BGSU Falcons, they want to play slow and steady. They don't want to go ahead and get picked off. You don't want to have a player go in a little bit too far. You can already see UT just being a little bit overextended. So, I mean, you got to find the right positioning because you could have yourself an engine defuse on your hands. We haven't seen any of these players start it just yet. But Hayes, he's going to go for it now. Yuzi's going to set up for the grenade. This has to be perfect. That's the lineup so insanely, and it's just not really putting the pressure on yet. But he does find one. Goes Woo! for the second. Gets the kills, and there's Bright State. Yuzi on fire right now. Yuzi is not going away silently. He is putting Wright State on his back. 1v3, 1v2, doesn't matter. All he needs at this point is a 1v4 to cap it off. This squad is up 3-0, and hey, this is what we talked about. They need the momentum. Hey, home field advantage might be a thing because right now the Wright State Raiders, I mean, right now they're the away squad, but all their fans are in the chat, and they might have hyped them up to take this lead early in this search. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what really could game to him, but it's definitely <laughs> working out overall. I mean, finding so many kills. Yuzi's on fire right now, sitting at a 6-0 KD ratio. I mean, that's a glide bomb in hand whenever you want to go ahead and really pop that out and make the most of it. But honestly, if your gun is doing all the work, you're not really too concerned. You see Evade able to push on the side, finally find that kill. So able to go and close out the man of the hour, as it seems so far. But Neptune now being in the spotlight once again, saying, all right, it's a 1v3 scenario. I've seen my brother do it. Can my I turn. pull it off myself? <laughs> Finds that first kill, looking for two more. Most definitely possible. But the bomb is down. You got to really go ahead and see what you can really work out. Because, I mean, with so much over-influence over there, you see that timer counting down. You know you have to go ahead, move somewhere, and really make a move. You find a flank, and is that going to be enough? With these two players isolated, you've got to find the right angles and really check everything as much as you can. The clock is his worst enemy right now, Neptune. He's going to be spotted out by one of the players, and he's just going to be walking right past him as BGSU. They are going to be able to answer back, get their first round in nice fashion and on the offensive end. So, I mean, that was a very important round win because now BGSU, they're going to be heading to the defensive side. Will they be able to keep this momentum going? We just got to wait and find out. Yeah, we most definitely do. I mean, waiting is the name of the game so far. We find ourselves only waiting for Wright State to get only two more rounds. I mean, they've given themselves so much leeway now to get to that match point scenario. It's only a two-round deficit now for BGSU, so things definitely looking doable for them. But Wright State, once again, being on that offense, able to go ahead and set the momentum, set the tie, go ahead and say, look, let's we can take it to B again because that's been working out for us time in and time out. But let's Ooh. go ahead and have a little curveball in there. Ooh. Let's go ahead and switch things up, see if we can hit this A side. And you know already with the default to come through, BGSU almost made it pass, but with the kills that come out, it all comes down to Germ finding that first kill. Neptune assisting with the second. Now making it a 2v2, but Evade falls as well. So now that's making it a 1v2 there. Hayes, it all comes down to him. Neptune just went huge. He caught a two-piece above the mailroom, but finally he gets taken out. It's a 1v1. Hayes versus Germ. This is going to be a good one, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be Germ with bomb in hand. He's going to opt to plant. No, player in lobby, and he's going to get taken out as BGSU. They answer back on defense yet again. This is what I'm saying. They might have been able to turn the tides, regain that, uh, that momentum that this squad in right state started off so hot with. You know, it's just a great answer there towards the staircase. We see BGSU go for the 2-2 split, push right through A, get overly aggressive, find themselves just pushing up towards those spawns. And, I mean, honestly, I thought Wright State had seen that to some extent and said, look, let's go ahead and slow things down and let go ahead and have that little crazy play to where they just run right past us. We get a stealth plant. We get an amazing post plant as well. But instead, we just saw BGSU able to go ahead and find so many kills towards that staircase over there towards the A site to go ahead and and open up the round, not close it out. But it almost seems like with how much momentum they got there, how much of a stage presence they got, it's like they closed it as well. So Vade is going to be able to get this bomb down at B. So BGSU, they are in prime position to win this round. 4v4 retake going to be coming in. The train tracks battle is going to be a massive one, but it's going to be UC walking right past Hayes. Wow, that is awkward. Okay, so I don't think either one of these players are going to be seeing each other. No, they walked right past each other, and now it is going to be UT on the flank. Apollo did drop, though. Is UT going to be able to take out this player in solar right above him? No, UT has now walked past two players, but Evade coming in, picking up two inside the site. That's massive because the last one that's going to be left is UT, and hey, this one's not going to be happening. Yeah, I don't think it really could be, especially when you already see uh, the amount of time that's left on the clock for the bomb. You're just going to go ahead and let it tick down. UC's going to play things slow and steady. See if he can find some exit frags. But, I mean, this is Call of Duty. This isn't another game that I'm thinking of. So, 
nobody's going to overextend. Nobody's going to find themselves dying to shit in BGSU. They're going to find themselves another round, tying this entire series up when it comes around to this S&D. Yeah, and right there was so unfortunate, man. He walked past two different players that were watching the flank or the or the mid. You know, th that was massive. If he would have been able to pick one of those up, you know, Utsi might have been able to turn the tides for his squad. Still sitting at 6-2 and two now. We're looking at 3-3. Three, three. We're all even, essentially resetting, ladies and gentlemen. This, this it couldn't be closer. And now with Wright State, it looks like they are going to be heading right back to that B-bomb site. They're not going to be trying any trickery as they did on their last offensive round. Yeah, I mean, even then, you got to go ahead and have yourself a pretty good return. Wright State's kind of slowed down this momentum they've had. they got so many rounds there in a row, they really just answered later on. But, I mean, things are starting to slow down for them. You can see them starting to respect BGSU a little bit more, not getting overly aggressive, not getting that early plan as we've seen prior to this moment. Instead, they're just sitting back, playing things slow and steady, seeing if that same push from BGSU in that last round when they were on the defense is going to come through. But instead, I mean, they're just biding their time. BGSU saying, sweet. I mean, the longer it takes them to get onto this bomb site, the longer it takes for them to go ahead and make a move. That just puts the pressure on them in those last couple seconds scenarios, saying, look, you got to get this bomb down. If it reaches five seconds and we're that lucky, we can just make a play, throw a nade out, and win a round. Yeah, right, State. You know, right now, they definitely feel, you know, a little bit confused on where they should go. Bomb's going to start to go down. That's going to be heard, and that's going to be sniffed out. Like, you got to know Evade is playing over here. They're not going to be giving you the free plant with a minute left. That's definitely not going to be the case. As Evade picks off one, and now he's just got to play a time as it is a 3v4 situation. They've got to plant the bomb. They've got only a few seconds left to do it. It's going to start to go down, but Evade, he's going to come in the same route, take the player out the exact same way, hop out the same window, and uh, yeah. Rinse, wash, and repeat for Evade, ladies and gentlemen, as he picks up a three-piece in that round. BGSU are coming in heavy on the retake. Oh, they most definitely are. I mean, that's a great way to go ahead and capitalize on that, find themselves a lead. I mean, that's just exactly what they needed. BGSU looking a little lackluster there for the first couple rounds. A lot of clutch moments to shut them down, and I'm sure they're sitting there collaborating, saying, look, this isn't us. We've sat there, found ourselves a really good hard point. We won that out purely off slays as well. I mean, we just translated that to points a little bit better. And at this stage in the game, we, we don't let them get back up. We were a little bit asleep at the wheel on that front end. But, I mean, knowing that we just won Berlin, knowing that we had the better stationing, knowing that we had the better setups, we just got to go ahead and really work off that. We can't be asleep Ooh. at the wheel. We can't find whatever. But maybe Solar could find himself a pick with a sniper in hand. And now Evade, he's going to be calling in that glide bomb, letting everyone know where all these players are going to be at. This bomb is going to be going down for their spawn. Sniper is going to be in hand of Solar as well. You can see already UC is trying to get the early pick, but he does get taken out by Hayes. Now BGSU, they have the bomb down. They have the advantage. They only have 30 seconds remaining to defend this one. Most definitely do. I mean, even then, you can already see him kind of getting over a little bit zealous, getting over extended, but it's not going to matter because if you get Apollo there on the side, he's going to find himself one. Really go ahead and dwindle down those numbers. It all comes down to Neptune. He just can't find the right frags, can't find the right position to go ahead and get those flanks. And then once you know it, you find yourself sitting in a match point for the likes of BGSU, and we expect the right state to really run away with this one. Oh, man, we did. This was looking like a locomotive runaway with the clutches coming in from Wright State early on, a 1v3 and a 1v2, and you only have three rounds on the board. That really just means BGSU. They've been playing flawless. They've just been making some mistakes at the end of the rounds, and hey, Evade right now. This is the Evade show. He's triple positive, 12 and 4, doing it all for his squad, currently on a six streak. Everyone on their team is on streaks right now, three and two. So, I mean, all of them are threats to be able to pop off and they're on defense as well. This is just spelling disaster for the side of right state. Oh, Germ trying to change their fortunes right now as he is able to pick off Apollo and that could be massive. So you can hear nothing going to be connecting there. So it's all good. Good to go. Three v four situation still for right state. They have the bomb in hand as well. They can go ahead and choose where they want to bring the battle to. And as you can already see, they're making their way towards B a little bit. They want to get antsy, but they don't want to overextend because they knew that there was possibly a sniper in that last round. They heard the shot. They know they have some pretty good long lineups for like the BGSU, so you just want to play it as slow as possible. But there you go. Straight thing run coming right in on top of that B-bomb. If you were any of these players for Wright State and you don't know what's going on, you're hoping that you can get inside. You don't get fragged out. Nothing there either. So some great ways for the likes of Wright State to avoid these kill streaks, but can they avoid the gunfire from Evade, who's now getting onto the site? Whew. Make it 13 for Evade right now. He's going to be even in the score. Three to versus three. He does get dropped, though. Let's hop on with Solar, see if he's going to be able to even the score yet again. He puts in some shots. None land, though. So 
he's going to be able to turn and burn him. Yes, they're going to be punishing him. Right State coming right on back. They just need two more to upset this BGSU squad. Will they be able to do it one round at a time? Well, they most definitely have to, looking at the way they played that hard point earlier. Get themselves that leeway to go ahead and be working with. Go ahead and find themselves a little bit of a safety net to be playing off of as well because they've had themselves an outstanding game so far, an outstanding series so far. They've just been a little bit lackluster in some areas. It's just the small things here and there that start to add up, and you can tell right here they're micro-analyzing those, saying what can we get rid of, what can we go ahead and make ourselves just – Calm down a little bit because we know we can get the kills. We know we can get the positioning. Because that was the first round we saw where right State as a whole really collaborated to a round and it's success. Woo! But there you go. UT finding the success here off the get-go in this round. Able to find a pick with a sniper. A great way to open up this one. Get that first blood and make it a 4v3. Oh, yeah. And, man, he is feeling good about that one. Glove to see in the sniper play on this B street. And he's just got to lock this one down. And you can see BGSU. They're going to be rotating around looking to pick off this player in germ and that could be massive you can see the challenge coming in neptune he's going to get the better of that one so now right state they're in an even better position to clutch this one up but it is going to be vgsu with the sneak play both players are going to be getting in the backside they might be able to get these spawns and kill a couple players by shooting them in the back if they keep rotating but no they're going to opt to set up in here plant this bomb and i mean better safe than sorry Better safe than sorry is definitely a great way to go ahead and call it. I mean, honestly, you just want to get that down. You want to put the pressure. So you don't want to have too many players really rushing to your position. But, I mean, it's the only objective at this point. Just play defense. You can't go ahead, find yourself a wraparound. You can't overextend to really get these kills, get these players. And even then, where you see Apollo's the last one alive, already overextending. Go ahead and get him picked off a little bit too quickly. But there you go. Finding one there on the edge is going to be the rest of the right state. Just saying, you know what? We know where he is now. Just rush the bomb. Who cares where he is? He's not on the objective. But you see him able to rush it quick enough. But Yuchi's there for the answer. Goes ahead, finds that defuse, and finds the end of the round for the likes of right state to go ahead and tie up this game. They're looking a heck of a lot better than what they did earlier, and it all comes down to whether they continue, continue it. Round 11, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. This is where champions are made. Are BGSU going to be able to go up 2-0 and control this series, or are Wright State going to be able to show some fight and tie this one up? It all comes down to one round. Let's find out who's on defense, ladies and gentlemen, as this one is going to get popping. It's going to be Wright State on the offensive, BGSU on the defensive. This one's going to be hot and heavy. I'm assuming it's going to be a B push. How, how will they be able to pull this one off? Let's find out. It all comes down to whether they can go ahead and set up some kind of alternate avenue. You can already see Germ saying, look, I'm not going to push to the right with the rest of my team this time around. I'm not going to go docks. I'm going to take an alternate avenue. Go ahead. Get up on the tower there towards the left side right there on spawn. And say, oh! okay, play slow and steady. Evade. But there you go, Evade. That is he a terrible himself. beginning. The, oh, no. Evade was doing so well. And the streak's not going to be landing at all for UT. Two blunders from each squad, but I got to say, Evades was bigger. 5-5, five, five, yeah. round 11. You can't be blowing up the barrels. That is so unfortunate. And now, this squad in BGSU, they've got to set up shop on this defensive end. It's going to be a lot harder, though, because this bomb is going to start to go down, and nobody's over there because guess what? Evade is the player that watches B, and he blew himself up with a barrel. Oh, UT, what are you pushing out for? Is he going to be able to get taken out? No, but this nade could be massive. Hayes, is he going to be able to make a connect? No, he gets a hit marker. Oh, UT is playing his life perfectly. Oh, his germ no. is able to pick up a kill right state. They might have done it. They might have done it. UT still playing his life. Hey, he's not going to be able to take him out. And right state have tied up the series one to one, ladies and gentlemen, clutching up the round 11. You can't let that happen. I mean, honestly, at a stage like this, as you mentioned earlier, round, I mean, round five. I mean, you go ahead, you're on the second series point. You got to go ahead, get yourself to round 11. You're on map two. You're going ahead and setting whether you're going to have yourself the advantage for the rest of this game or whether you're going to just really go ahead and make things a lot easier for Wright State. And that's what they did. They said, let's make this easy for them. Ooh. I'm going to kill myself, our top frag at that. I mean, if I'm on a Wright State team at this stage, I'm saying, look, let's go. I mean, that is perfect. The most, yeah. I'd say, the most devious player on their squad just made our job so much easier, making it now 4v3, and we can, the one guy who could clutch up is now not even a factor anymore. That just Ooh. sets up so much aggression. I mean, I think that's why UT ever pushed, saying, look, there goes their B player. I can push in their spawn if I want to, so long as you don't see Hayes up there on the top able to try to get those shots, but instead, you just play that life, makes out that call. When that grenade doesn't go all the way through, it just opens up so much space, oh, so much breathing room for their team to say, look, 
There's one up top there towards the middle. We already got bombed down. Our, their biggest player killed themselves. Honestly, boys, let's just wrap this one up. Having to win three rounds in a row. They were down five to three, ladies and gentlemen. They brought it back. This squad in right state, they are still undefeated in search and destroy on the season. Now three and oh to their name. And now we get to see if they're going to be undefeated on control. Whew, here we go, man. And we're going to be going to Gavutu. How are you calling this one based off, based off the momentum that honestly Wright State currently possess? I mean, honestly, I'm still looking at BGSU for this one. That's why Wright State needed to win this out. I feel like BGSU, they had themselves a little bit more momentum just generally when it comes around to the entirety of the season so far. They played themselves a little bit more game. They, you can see that they've grabbed themselves a lot more frags just collectively as a team. So, I mean, you can't really have too many clutch players. You can't have too many clutch scenarios knowing how the spawns don't really find themselves switching out or being on a reset basis. So, I mean, Gavutu being such a long lineup map, being such an AR heavy map, I just got to see who goes ahead, finds those first frags, and whether or not we can see that B site being taken first, because that's going to be a big, big factor coming up here with how easy A is. Hey, well, listen, we'll be finding out very shortly. Listen, guys, you know these matches are insane. Do not go anywhere. We will be back after this very, very short break. We'll be getting into control on Gavutu. Do not go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a show in store. See you right in a second. And welcome back to the CCL Week 3, Day 1. I am Rome DMV, and joining me is Mick, and we have had an incredible series so far. Yeah, we most definitely have. Sitting at 1-1 right now, I'm just hoping we follow suit, get ourselves to that map 5 there on Desert Siege that we have not gotten any glimpse of just yet. But as it sits right now, we're going to go into map 3. we got to go through this control before we get there, knowing that this is going to be the grand premiere of control here for ccl this week i'm super excited Ooh. knowing that you just saw a little sneak peek at tuscan but we're not going to be going to there this time around we're going to give to we're going to have some longer lineups some ar spotlights here on the field and see who can really bring out the heat and find themselves getting a lead here in the series oh yeah if you don't bring the heat stay out of the kitchen simple as that and we all know gavutu man this one is going to be a war so give me a little bit of a breakdown on how these teams on the offensive side are going to be looking to play this gavutu side I mean, honestly, from what I've seen just here regularly, it's going to be the A hit first, obviously. I sat there mentioned it earlier. B is going to be the extreme pain to go ahead and capture knowing it's right there on the other side of the field. you got to run all the way down the shoreline because for any of you hard point connoisseurs, you know these sites. It's going to be bottom boat right there on P2 where you find yourself looking at side A for the attacking side. And then over towards B, you're going to find yourself on P3 towards that boat there on the shore side where you're going to find yourself just being right next to that defensive spawn. So you really got to do a darn good job of holding things out. Make sure you can really hunker down and just play a really, really good defense if you're on the defending side. So, I mean, we're going to see some A hits right off the get-go constantly, constantly, constantly. That's where most of the lives are probably going to go ahead and be diminished. Because if you don't know how control works, you have 30 lives to get yourself. You capture two sites, and each site has three ticks of progress that you have yourself a little bit of a checkpoint at. Once the defenders can get themselves onto that site, they can diminish the progress a little bit so long as it's not contested. So you're obviously going to be pushing for the closest one to you. Make sure you can get that time reset once you capture that first point and make your job that much easier. All right. Now let's see if these squads are going to be able to pull it off right here. Right State, they're looking to come into this control and be flawless as the same thing can be said about BGSU because guess what? Nobody's played it, ladies and gentlemen. And hey, yeah, everyone's going to have a clean slate, 0-0. Zero, zero, so, you know, this is going to be a big question mark on how these teams are going to play it. If the team gets shut out, I can't even say that I'm surprised because we just don't know how these teams have been playing it. We don't know who's been practicing. We don't know what's been going down. But, I mean, hey, if, if the way this series has went so far is telling us anything, these teams are well-practiced and well-ready for control to be thrown at them. Oh, they most definitely better be, because every single time I can at least tell us from our perspective as casters, when we go through looking at these stats, when we go looking at teams and we sit there and say, who's really going to make the difference in this series? It all comes down to control. That's the one mode we look at because you don't see that twice. That's the big differential, because if you don't find yourself control, you better hope you have a darn good hard point in SMD to where it doesn't even matter where you find yourself in a game five. So, I mean, both these teams are going to be fighting to have that more impressive stat line. Say, all right, over the course of the season, we're going to look favored if we win control, because say if our strong point isn't as good, or if our hard point or our SMD really just isn't as sufficient, that's okay. We have control to go ahead and give ourselves at least one guaranteed point, make sure the series lives a little bit longer, and we can continue on and find ourselves possibly some kind of a rally to turn things around. 
Oh yeah, this BGSU squad as well. It looks like they are going to be on the offensive, ladies and gentlemen, and they are going to be pushing out B to kick things off. Very interesting start coming out of them, but hey, if the guns are hot, if you're able to get the slays, you might be able to take this one over. Yeah, and surprisingly enough, we see right off the get-go, everybody rushing this B side. So, I mean, honestly, I respect the decision. BGSU saying, look, I know which one's a little bit more hectic to get, a little bit more troublesome, so let's see if we can lock it down first. But instead, Ride State having the answer saying, look, we're going to slay out, baby. We only lost one life. Y'all have already lost Woo! yourselves six. So you only got so many lives to deal with. Let's see how much you do with 24 now on the line. And we have ourselves a pretty good advantage. Go ahead, buddy. Let's try it out all day. One for one. We're still going to win this out. Their first kill finally coming in from Apollo on the UTC. It has been all right state to start this one out as it's 50 seconds remaining. So they're going to opt to go over to that A side simply because it is a little bit easier. One sneaky beaver and Apollo is going to be going back toward that beach side. But hey, he's going to be met by Neptune over there. So it's going to be a 3v3 situation on this one. You can see Solar right now trying to play his life. Going to be dropping down, able to take out UTC. Is he going to be able to get into this one and start to capture it? It looks like that is going to be the case. Yeah, BGSU able to go ahead and do a pretty good job here of evening out the lives so far. And even then, you have Ride State trying to get on that boat, trying to have that control, but they're getting a little bit over antsy, going ahead and making some reckless calls, which is costing their lives now. As we sat there and saw ourselves looking at what was almost a five-kill disparity and having all these lives to play with, I mean, BGSU is now on site. They found themselves an entire clear, and they're probably going to grab A off of this. And now, with the timer reset, now with a minute and a half left remaining, and also still a plenty of lives to be dishing out, 19 to 21 is going to be that count there in the top of how many respawns you get. I mean, things are looking pretty doable for them here. So long as you can just see if they push up these spawns, find a lot of kills from the back, and just make their job that much easier. Yeah, and if anyone's going to be behind you, you don't want it to be evade because even if you spot him, he's going to be dipping and dodging out of there as he just did. Man, this kid is definitely something special. It's going to be BGSU. They're going to be in the spawns trying to make havoc. It's going to be Apollo back here as well. Reich is going to be trying to hunt him out, but no, Apollo's going to get the better of him. And it's going to be BGSU right now trying to take control of this one. As you can see, Hayes, he's capturing it, ladies and gentlemen. It's almost there. It most definitely is, and it all comes down to whether or not Riot State can answer this. You do see the contestant come through, but do you have the resources? Do you have the teammates that are really make that impact? And you can see the glide bomb coming through, finding at least one kill, making sure the life differential is still in the favor of Riot State, but can they make themselves enough of a transition off this? Can they translate the, the points, the time, the kills, to finding themselves around defense? Because defense on control is always going to be favored, so it comes down to whether or not a BGSU, if they can close this out, they're probably favored for here for the rest of it, at least this map. Precisely. This one is going to be coming down to the wire for sure, but that's going to be three kills now going toward the way of BGSU. Make that four as this should be control coming in for BGSU as they just need one more round of slays, essentially, ladies and gentlemen. And that is going to be it as the Falcons are going to be able to win this first offensive round of control. That is major. Yeah, it most definitely is. I mean, usually in a challenger scene or in a CDL scene, you find a lot of teams not really able to find themselves on attacking side very efficiently. I mean, and it really sets the tempo for the rest of these teams to say, look, let's just go ahead, play our best defense, make sure nobody can lock us down, not have that advantage. Because now, if you're right state, you're saying, we have to answer this. We have to win an offense as well. Otherwise, this game's going to be out of our control. And we don't want to give them this map count over once again. So it all comes down to really where they find that push, where they can find a life advantage once again and not really throw it away this time around. As you can already see, they're pushing A, making sure to find the closer site to really be dishing out. But instead, they're going to play it slow and steady, play around the site, see if there's too many players nearby. And Neptune with that first blood and a couple other players are on the site. Yeah, and I like this out of right state, you know, not going for the cheeky play, not going to be trying to flex their muscles and say, look, we're going to go to B. No, they're going to keep it playing safe, and they're just going to come toward A and try to get as much time as possible as they already have one tick on the board right now. We just got to see if they're going to be able to keep this momentum going as we are on with Hayes right now. Going to be locking this one down from the top middle of the boat. Going to be able to spot a player. His teammates are going to be able to take out two, make that three. He spots the fourth. He's just going to be waiting for him. He's going to be able to take him out, and he has got that automaton in hand, and nothing is going to be oh, stopping no. him as he's going to be able to take out two. Currently nine and three. He's on a sp six spree, ladies and gentlemen, fully streaked out. This guy, Hayes, he's definitely doing his part right now for this BGSU squad.
again, it's a huge step up from the SMD where he was pretty negative there, wasn't able to really get the momentum rolling, really just didn't get too many kills on the board to make that big of a differential. But now he's definitely ticked off a little bit. He's saying, look, now's my time to shine. I got to step up. I really got to play this game. And Wright State stepping up as well, saying, look, we got to pause this timer. We only got 23 seconds left on the board. We didn't even have a tick of progress because we sat there and was a little bit short of it earlier. You boys there in the middle, you got to hold us out. We're on site. We see BGSU pushing in, and Reich is all by his lonesome, not able to get anything done. And we see BGSU closing out that A site, looking like this round could go to their side once again, make it into 2-0, but it all comes down to whether Retort comes in instantaneously enough. Can we see the shots from UT? Can we see a slay? Can we see a clear? And can we see the backup to really close things out? Yeah, as UT tried to go for the pre-fire right there, but Wright State are able to pick up three in the kill feed, make that four. They might be able to cap it as there's only nine seconds remaining. They need one more round of slays, and they're going to be able to get it with just nine seconds. Put a minute back on that clock, ladies and gentlemen. We're not done yet. You can already see UT on the move for B, saying, look, you guys look like you have it over there. If I can find some shots here on the outside and make sure to go ahead and give our life differential look that much more convincing. I mean, Wright State looking like to do a pretty good darn job so far. Sitting at 53 seconds, sitting on that site, just pausing that timer, buying out as much as they can. You can see Neptune on the top being sniffed out a little bit, but the glide bomb's going to come in. Hopefully this finds a kill if you're a Wright State player, but you go ahead, you find the shot, Neptune with one, just going ahead, playing that Oracle role, saying, is anybody in the back? And of course they are. You take down Holy Bay. You find yourself in more time. Your team is on site, finding two ticks of progress on B. You've Diminish down the live count to seven. You have 14 in hand. You can just rush in all willy-nilly at this stage, just like I'm speaking, and find yourself around. Uh, I don't ask to go on with a player a lot. We have to go on with Neptune. The guy is 20 and four right now for Wright State. 20 and four. We'll make it 20 and five. Either way, he is quadruple positive, ladies and gentlemen. The guy is absolutely doing it all for his team right now. They're trying to make this comeback possible. 28 seconds going to be remaining. The question is, will BGSU be able to hold out for this little amount of time remaining oh. as Evade? Going to pick up the big 1v1 kill. And man, what a massive one at the perfect time. And there you go. The picks are coming in their left. They're coming out on shore. They're going ahead, biting at that time. Solar has to make a move immediately and hold down the most perfect defense we've ever seen. But instead, being a little bit lackluster, not able to find the shots on time. Wow. It all came down to Neptune there, making that live differential so massive to the stage where BGSU said, look, we can't even push like we wanted to anymore. This guy's slain us out way too many times. We just don't have the lives anymore to really dish out. we got to play things slow and steady. And in the meantime, B gets captured. And all right, safe, find themselves an attacking round to answer up. Yeah, and I got to be honest, if I'm the side of Wright State, I'm saying thank you, Neptune, because this guy absolutely went off that round. Good golly almighty, 20 and 6 to his name now. This time they're on the defensive side. I think they learned from their mistakes. I'm not sure that BGSU are going to be able to find the same success that they found in round one. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, Wright State really just going ahead finding some momentum there, saying, look, we can answer, but we can't do attacking all game. That was extremely stressful for us. And can Neptune really just step up and keep that kind of momentum time in and time out, attacking and defense? But there you go. Wright State finding the right trades right off the get-go, able to find themselves a two-for-one, making sure the life differential is in their favor. You see a wipe come through, so now that's four comparing to one. So a great way to go ahead and start off. But... Can they follow through? Can they hold out this site? Knowing they have 29 to 25, it's a great way to find the establishment. But, I mean, when you see the setup, when you see the rotations, when you see that BGSU could go ahead and not for B, instead they're finding themselves in the middle of the map, which could be somewhat of a wild card, which does result in one kill. Make that two. Neptune's there with the answer, though. Neptune going off 22 and 6 and going to be playing his life not going for the challenge just because his guns are blazing right now this kill feed is all white all right if you will as UT is going to be pushing up through the middle just trying to press the advantage that they found right now with only 30 seconds remaining he's going to be able to find one and he's going to be hard looking straight at these spawns he's oh. going to be able to pick up two UT he's going to be getting busy oh. as he picks up three lining them up for the fourth he sees them going to be waiting in the winds as they only have a few seconds remaining and now he's going to be able to pick off yet another one going massive and now it's going to be up to neptune and germ to hold off this squad in bgsu 20 seconds remaining but they've got control of a and they're not looking to give it up is this going to be the hold coming in from the final two players Hayes and evade will they be able to do it no they get taken out very swiftly and now it's going to be a break that is going to be needed from the side of bgsu only 10 seconds remaining 
remaining is going to be Neptune. He's going to be fending him off. Only a few remaining, ladies and gentlemen. But Neptune, he's saying, I'm on another planet. I'm on another world. 27 and 6. This guy's doing it all for his squad. He needs to just get them off. Only a few seconds remaining. You cannot let this go through. But there it is. BGS, you have secured the point. Neptune, he didn't want to get down and dirty in the lower level. And hey, that's what's going to cost you is right state. Now they've got to defend this B site. But what a show coming in from Neptune. Yeah, they had to defend the B site, but honestly, they don't have too many players to defend from. You only see two lives remaining in the likes of BGSU, so, I mean, you got one player being demolished now. Apollo is literally in a 1v16 while still trying to take the site as well and being captured, being held hostage over there on the top of the boat. You got to make a move, buddy, because otherwise, we're going to see Wright State making sure to push up, find themselves that defense, because in the meantime, we're going to see the timer going down and down and down, and really, you're on the clock to literally be the best player we have ever witnessed in CCL history. But Ooh. instead, you find yourself one. You have 18 seconds left to go ahead and find yourself either A, 14 kills, or a site to be working with. And I don't think either one of those are going to come into fruition. As we are on with Apollo, the lone man standing for his squad. One life remaining. This one is going to be all right state. Ladies and gentlemen, they are going to go up 2-0 as they have secured their defensive round. But the question is, will they be able to do it again on the offensive side? Hey, we just got to find out right here. Are we going to be heading to that overtime? I got to be honest, it smells like overtime right now. I mean, I'm kind of with you there. I could sense myself in overtime. I mean, but looking at how BGSU was a little lackluster with that offense, I think right State could definitely step it up here. I mean, seeing how they've had themselves such good frags across the board, left, right, and center, time in, time out. If they just do that again, if you just see these players stepping up, time in, time out, they can make the life differential play into their favor almost instantaneously as they're already pushing onto this A side, looking for a little bit of time. And if they can find the right trace off the get go, and there you go, drum with that first blood. That's a great way to start things up, saying, look, A is that. That much more clear now can we have any more players over extend to me and give me their lives yeah now jeremy is going to be going in the most annoying spot in competitive right now in my opinion anytime someone's up here i'm so mad because they're on the perfect head glitch and they're just able to gun me every single time as jeremy's going to be able to do right there picking off a couple before finally getting taken out so hey First push coming in from right. I mean, you got to say it's pretty much successful. They were able to get one tick off the board, but it's going to be reverting back toward the BGSU way right now. Right State have got to figure something out to get through this one, and ah, it looks like that's not going to be the case. Resetting. As was simply not. I mean, you saw Jir up there in the top trying to find those frags, trying to go ahead and get some kills, and he most definitely accomplished that goal. But, I mean, the rest of the players there in the bottom, just right there on the floor, not really being at that same sort of elevation, just was not finding the kills to follow through. And so you saw everybody else dying out, just kind of going ahead, evening up the lives once again. And you can see BGSU really stepping up now, saying, look, this is going to go ahead and go to their side. Right State's going to have the series off this alone and have the advantage. So we got to go ahead and step things up right now. Otherwise, this is going to get out of our control, and we really can't let that happen. As the kill feed, that's going to be three to make that four going toward BGSU. And hey, now Hayes, he understands there might be a little bit of a sneaky play coming in from Utsi, and he's going to be shutting it down immediately as it is still all orange, ladies and gentlemen. We most likely are going to be seeing an overtime unless a miracle happens coming in from right. And even then, with zero seconds remaining, you had those spawns locked up, just not too much right stake can do there. It didn't even come down to the lives, didn't really come down to the site, just came down to time and how you just don't have enough of it to get onto there. So, I mean, a great, a great answer here from BGSU, a very quick one at that. It's very quick round that we've ever seen. I mean, no contention on that site at all. Just really making it almost what seemed a, just a minute and 30 timer. I mean, that's Ooh. all it was. Hold so, on, I mean, but this got spicy, though, because BGSU are on offense. I thought the BGSU would get the defensive side. Oh. I'm actually – so does it go by kills? Is that the – It goes by kills. Up? Whoever okay, has okay, the most lives so. remaining over the course of those first two rounds, they go ahead and find so themselves – So they did not change defense. that. Then they can thank Neptune for having defense right now. 30 and 13, and make that 31 and 13 as he's going to be able to get first blood here. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a great way to set up that one round where we saw Riot State win purely off of Slays. That it's rounds like that that you really want to close out. Sometimes you want to find yourself getting in the lead so you can have this defense here on the third round. You can already see it going ahead, finding out his time, finding those kills, finding two with that glide bomb out of Utsi. But can Wright State follow through? Can they get on this B side? 
Can they find an answer? And can they also be across the map enough? When you would see there at the top, able to find the shots, knowing where the presence of all these players are. Slaying at one, slaying at a second, looking for a third. Just really taking that cover, saying, look, buddies, they're switching over to A. Run over here right now. I need this help. Oh, yeah. The reinforcements are going to be coming in extremely quick. Reich, he's going to need to burst through the bottom boat and pick up a kill. But no, that's going to be Hayes meeting him with that aggression. Neptune now trying to do what he can on the opposite side near B. Because he's just going to be locking this side down, making sure that nobody's going to be coming on up. And not in his world, not in his galaxy. Is he going to pick up soon? No. Is this going to be three dropping on the side of right? This might be the perfect push for BGSU, the exact one that they needed. Yeah, right. just got to slay out here. Just going to play that did. Is it going to do it right? Because you see, I mean, A is almost completely done there. That's going to be a time of reset. They're going to be moving for this A side or going for some kind of split so far. So right State just has to find the right kills. Go ahead, find these players on site. There you go. There's one. Clear out that A side. Buy it some more time for the rest of your squad. Let Neptune follow through in the middle of the map. Do his thing sitting at 35 and 15. With that life differential, being in the advantage of Bright State right now, they just have to go ahead and keep this momentum. Keep playing it out. Who cares at the time of reset to the stage? Go ahead, hold down the middle, find more kills, make sure they can't even play the game anymore. Yeah, because it all comes down now to B, ladies and gentlemen. BGSU were able to find success at A, and hey, with one minute left, it all comes down to these gunfights right here. BGSU able to pick up three in the kill feed. Now, this is going to be some nice pressure coming in from them. This could spell trouble for the side of right, but that's going to be Germ picking up two, and that is massive for his squad, but Hayes was able to slip through the cracks as he is going to be capturing this one. Halfway there about, and it's going to be right. He's going to be coming in looking for him. He's going to be able to take out this player, though. It's right state. They are going to be able to clear this one out. We see right state having three complete team respawns. I mean, just being really stationed up for this. Meanwhile, BGSU, if they die once, this is going to be their last respawn. That's going to be all they have to deal with. Even then, some of the players might not even get a respawn if they just play out their life enough and the yeah. rest of their team is dying around. They're saying, look, buddy, uh, we got to share this amongst the people. We all got to uh -oh. have our fair share of respawns this time around. As it goes ahead, diminishes down to 6 to 12 so far. So you just got to go ahead, play that defense, get onto the site because right now, Hayes is sitting on a queue in that time, making things look doable because the rest of the team is just sitting around the outside. Now, we're oh. the picks, but there's right. Pushing on, contesting the side, taking down the tick, but Solar moving up as well. You got 22 seconds. You got to make a move now, and you only got three lives to do it. Yes, yeah, Solar trying to make it all happen. Two lives remaining. This might be it for Wright State, ladies and gentlemen, as we are on with Yutsi. Killstreak's going to be coming in as well. He's locking this one down. The beach is his. He's playing in the sand, and Wright State have taken a 2-1 decisive advantage in this series. All thanks to Neptune. I mean, I'm just, I got to give credit where it's due right off the get-go, right? We got to give credit to the man who really sat there and turned the tide to such an extent where you can set up for round three, being on that defense, kick back your lawn chair there on the beach and say, look, we got this, boys. We're on defense. We sat there. We slay out. We do our job, sit up there in the middle of the map, and we can find the right frags to really close this thing out. So a great attempt there from them. A great way to just follow up, follow through, get this second now round in the map series. So Everything being said and done, I know BGSU isn't going to go down easy, so we may be looking at a stage five here. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, hey, listen, we're going to be going to Bow Cage Hard Point, ladies and gentlemen. This one is going to be insane. It is going to be fast paced. I've been waiting for it. A lot of times it is map one in series that we watch. This time it's going to be map number four. Either way, I'm excited to see it here for sure. These two teams are about to put on a show. Who's going to be popping off from each squad? I mean, we've got Evade. We've got uh, we've got Neptune. We, it doesn't matter who it is on each side. Both have been popping off all day long. And right now it's going to be BGSU that are going to have to do it right here in a hard point. Something that they are currently eight and three on the season in. Will they be able to do it? Let's find out. Honestly, I think they're completely, uh, completely capable of it. I mean, just looking at the way we've seen BGSU's SMGs compared to Wright State's ARs, I think Wright State has had the advantage on these longer range maps. I mean, they've done themselves a great job of clearing out, finding the high ground, finding these massive just sniper spots, and just clearing out players, picking them off left and right. I mean, but BGSU, when it's time to get aggressive, they do it well. They do it better. They do find themselves on where they need to be at, at the right place, right time. And sometimes for finding those kills, sometimes not. So it all comes down to the positioning, whether or not right state can find the right lineups. But Bocajan is an extremely, extremely difficult map to really set up for. Unless you're on SND, where things just bite out a pretty slowly pace. But 
I mean, as it sits right now, I mean, BGSU could definitely close this one. Oh, yeah. And I mean, hey, listen, I think BGSU, I think they're in prime position to tie this one up and send us to a map five simply because we all know how good they have been in hard point. You look at the hard point, 250 to 185. That was the previous one played. And I mean, BGSU, they really had control pretty much the entire time. It never really seemed like Wright State were really in control of that map. So will that be able to carry over here on the bow cage? My guess is that that it's going to be yes, but we just have to see if Wright State are going to be able to carry this momentum that they have found from clutching up the the round 11 on Berlin Search and Destroy and getting that defensive side on Gavutu and clutching it up the way that they did and slaying out in such impressive fashion coming in from Neptune specifically. Is Neptune going to be able to put on that same performance here on Bowcage? Yeah, he's kind of got to because of that man alone. We go ahead and look at the stat line there in the bottom of each map, and you can see that Berlin and Gavutu both by a one-round differential. Hard point, the game doesn't play like that. It is completely consistent. It's constant, left, right, center. No matter where you go ahead and look, there's going to be a site somewhere spawning. There's going to be four players rushing it, and you're going to go ahead and make yourself relevant as well. So, I mean, there's a lot of pressure put onto the man, and BGSU, when it comes around and not having to worry about lives, Sometimes we see these BGSU players throwing it away, like in that s and Sometimes we see them getting overzealous and losing a little bit too many of them on like, control. But now when you have hard point, you're saying, look, we can get as silly with our lives as we want to. We can go ahead, get that joystick, click that left thumbstick, and then just run forward and then eventually plus that right trigger. I mean, that's all it comes down to. And honestly, I think Bokage is one of those maps that really plays in that, that kind of lifestyle, that play style. It says, look, get aggressive, get in their face, especially when you look at that P2, when you look at that P4, that P5, everything being so, so small, you're going to have to force yourself in. You're going to have to get overzealous. You're going to have to stop thinking there for a second and say, look, just push. Precisely. And, you know, I'm ready for, for the kill feed to go crazy. I'm ready for the two pieces, the three pieces. These squads have definitely shown that they're capable of that. It doesn't matter whether it's going to be Neptune, whether it's going to be Evade. Both of them have absolutely shown such impressive, uh, impressive showings already today throughout this series that honestly, I don't want to see either one of these squads lose this one. And they both deserve to win. They've been playing. This has been an absolute banger of a series. I'm so glad we get to cast another amazing series together, man. It seems like we're just blessed with, with the close ones man it's great to have yeah it most definitely is i mean i'd be a little bit more blessed if we could find ourselves going to that desert siege i mean we haven't seen it just yet it'd be another premiere at least for us to in, in the ccl so i'm excited to see whether or not we can get around to that seeing another search and destroy seeing if it's just nearly as close i mean imagine another map five round 11 i mean what more could you ask for i mean if you're looking for a good game i'm sure both these squads want to go ahead and close it out as quickly as possible to find themselves a guaranteed win but I think if we could see a little of a, bit of a sneak peek, see what these teams are made of, see what really happens once you start throwing down on Desert Siege, I think a lot of teams around the CCL are going to have to take note of it. Precisely is. Man, I think, honestly, if we go to that Desert Siege, my guess is is that this squad in Wright State, I think that they might be able to pull it off if it does go to that final map, simply because the way that they played this control, you can tell that they were very well practiced on it. And plus, you know, they've got the sniper on their side. So we already saw what he could do on Berlin. So I'm excited to see if he can carry that in. Man, Neptune, you know, he doing it all for his squad really in this series but the question is will he be able to do it in the cage we all know things tend to get a little crazy when you lock them up and now we get to see who is going to be the breakout player here on this map we all know it we all love it this one is going to get freaky real quick ladies and gentlemen uh, most definitely should and most definitely could i mean looking at the way we see the score lineup right now it has to be both these teams either going ahead closing things out or find themselves to continue for at least one more map going into a map five so it all lines down up right here. Who can go ahead and really just go ahead and establish themselves as the better objective player? I mean, is it going to be WSU when you see that one control? Or is it going to be BGSU saying, now we've won a hard point and another hard point? We're obviously having a pretty darn good darn day when it comes around to hard point. So let's go ahead, harbor down on that, make sure to double down with it, find that second round and go to S&D and say, let's not kill ourselves on that round 11 this time around and let's win it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. Evade. It was wild. He was doing it all for his squad in that search and destroy on Berlin. And then you get to the round 11 and you blow yourself up with a barrel. 
watching B when you've been picking up two pieces at B the entire game, pretty much putting your squad on your back. That was just so unfortunate for BGSU. I truly feel like if he wouldn't have went down there, we would be looking at a situation where BGSU went up 2-0. I really think that he, the way he was locking down that B site, I mean, once he accidentally killed himself, you know, right State, they just knew to push that site, and they had it good to go for their spawn 3v4. And so, you know, definitely a disappointing way for them to lose that search and destroy, but I think that they're going to be coming right back here in this bow cage looking for revenge because, as you said, BGSU, this is their bread and butter. They love hard point, and they're good at it. And so, hey, listen, you got to be able to flex your muscles where you can. Anytime you're in the gym, you got to be able to, you know, look good doing it, man. So let's go ahead and see if they're going to be able to look good on this bow cage going down now as we have been seeing this uh this graphic for a while man we are waiting to load in just like you guys as we are just getting to getting ready to get into this action very very shortly yeah most definitely redemption arc is what they're looking for so far to say look we got ourselves that snd so just monumentally close last time and it was just that small mistake here and there that just really and not even a small mistake a massive mistake that really just blew us up whether I'm saying that as a pun or literally, that's what happened. And you can't let it happen again. So if they're going to go ahead and say, let's do it on a map that people aren't really used to, that we haven't seen been selected at all, this could be the stage to do it. But we have to get there first. We have to make sure to win this. We have to make sure to close it out. And even if we won that first hard point, that shows we had the potential to win this again. We get that much more aggressive. We get that much more overzealous. And sometimes it may cost us in other modes. But this is the one map. It's the one mode that really incentivizes that. Saying, look, let's find ourselves that aggression. Let's go ahead. Let's harbor down on it. Let's accept it as our own child. Raise it. Play with it. And then make it the man we need today as a almost a fifth member on the field. An attitude that they can just carry over for the rest of the series. Oh, precisely, man. And hey, uh, listen, will Wright State be able to do it? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be hopping in is. right now. Is, yes, we are going to be on with Yutzi as we're going to be getting hot and heavy. Starting it off as he is going to be able to pick off Apollo before finally getting traded out. Yeah, most definitely a great little start there for both sides. BGSU find themselves the first two points, knowing they're going to be there towards the middle of the map, knowing they're going to be rushing up there. But, I mean, Wright State, which is much better trade, they're going to go ahead and make that a 2v3. So, I mean, a great way to open things up, a great start for them. But Wright State just had to follow through. Once again, playing a little bit smarter, having a little bit better setups, just going ahead, being on the outside, just finding the pick, saying, look, we don't need the time. So if we can kill all four of them, then go ahead and get a couple touches here and there. That's nearly as good as just holding out the site and dying on it over and over and over again. Oh, precisely. And hey, we all know on this P1, you're really not going to get too much of an advantage on it. It's really just going to be about flexing those slaying muscles, getting the scrap time that you can here and there, and setting up for P2. And right now, it looks like Wright State have done just that as they are going to be securing the spawns with relative ease as that kill feed is going to be going white as we are going to be heading over toward the bog, ladies and gentlemen, as Neptune's going to be at the back of it, trying to lock it down, but it is going to be Apollo that's going to be locked locking up this early time for them. So it's going to be Warfare going down in the barn as Germ's able to pick up two. Finally, a couple players getting traded out, but at the end of the day, it's going to be Wright State holding true on the point. Yeah, a couple seconds here, a couple seconds there. That's all you really want when you're trying to find yourself to make yourself relevant in this game. So, so we can already see BGSU with a great start, able to find themselves on a good bit of time there off the get-go. But, I mean, with Wright State on the answer, having those close response, having those kills to back it up as well, they now have the presence to go ahead and grab some more seconds. But instead... You see him just letting up, saying, okay, we're going to find a contestion, but we're not going to find any time overall. We're not going to get over antsy. We're going to wait for a return once again, find ourselves at a breach, and Yuzi being at the front hand of that, going ahead, throwing his body out on the line of service, able to find a couple more seconds for his team to find that lead they really need. Precisely. And hey, you'd see right now nine and three for his squad. Make that nine and four. Neptune, though, five and one. So, hey, a lot of players on right state are definitely showing out early in this one. BGSU trying to lock it in, but that's going to be Germ coming in, picking up a big two piece. Will he be able to make it three? Yes, he is. And he's going to be shutting out Apollo. Make it four. This guy, Germ, on a tear right now. Ladies and gentlemen, make that a five spree. As you see, he's going to be trying to match him right here in the hill. Germ finally does get taken out, but not before that spree came through. And that should be streaks. It most definitely should. It's a great way to go ahead and get themselves back to the board. Follow through a little bit. Find themselves some space to really clear out once it gets around to those open sites. Go ahead, clear things out, make your job for the rest of your team that much easier saying, all right, well, I know where they are. I know where they're spawning. I know which ones are on site. And obviously, I'm going to throw the glide bomb over there. But it seems right now on this P3, you can't really do too much of that. It's right there indoors. It's super heavy. It's super blood-ridden. And you don't want to go ahead and get in the fray without some kind of game plan first. 
Yeah, and I mean, as we are going to be heading over to P4, we just got to see exactly who's going to be slaying this one out in the bottom of the barn. Solar finally going to be taken out as Hayes trying to lock it down. But Germ, he's going to be bursting through the doors, picking up a two-piece yet again. I feel like a record on repeat because he's doing it all over again, baby. But it is going to be BGSU trying to get this scrap time. Three kills going to be coming in the way of the Falcons. And they're going to still be under contestion. Rick finally is going to get taken out at the bottom in that man. I mean, this squad right now, BGSU, they are hanging in there. This kill feed is all orange. They've got the, they've got all the control right now, and they're going to be getting all this scrap time. It looks like as there's only going to be one player trying to contest this little bit of time. Yeah, they didn't have too much control earlier whenever it really mattered in the game mode, match the game play right now. But I mean, even then, as they go ahead and fall into hard point, you can see they're definitely go ahead and holding things out. I mean, the way they're just falling themselves across the map, they're finding some really good breaks and it's investing in a lot of time. They're finding themselves a four man wipe saying, OK, we can grab ourselves at least 20 seconds off this, bide some more time. We're going to have the rotations come through in the next one. Just find another break. You can see Apollo on the outside, able to find one on the Neptune, looking for the second one on the Yutsi. Knowing those two outstanding players are now off the field, you go ahead and make the cue for the rest of your teammates. Say, get on that site, buddy. Let's go ahead and get some more time to be playing with. We're sitting at 100 now. We're already breaking that threshold before we did Bright State has. We're now leading up by 30. Make sure to keep on running away with this momentum. We can find ourselves an easy dub. It's the right state right now. We are on with the right. Currently 6 and 14. Make that 7 and 14. Double negative for his squad. He needs to pick it up for right state if they want to get into this one. You got German and Yutzi both 17 and 12. And, I mean, that's exactly what you need. You got to keep this slaying power coming out. Neptune doing his job as well. 13 and 5. Only 5 deaths to his name. If you look at everyone else's deaths on, in the game, it's just, it's not even close. He is by far and away playing his life to the best of his ability and hey, doing a great job of it. But they're still going to be down 35 to the Falcons right now as we're going to be heading right back to P1. Yeah, I mean, this rotation is going to come through. The reset in terms of these points are going to go right back to the middle of the map, and BGSU is definitely going to be ready for it. You can see the way they're setting themselves up, going ahead, getting these higher ground advantages, going ahead and getting out these windows, trying to find some flanks, trying to do whatever they can to really just open up that map, create that breathing space, and they're doing a pretty darn good job at it. But even then, right safe here with an answer with the glide bomb, able to get that intel of where they're coming from, able to go ahead and slow things down, say, all right, now we can think of an approach as well. Come on the outside, Germ, push that right side, create some space. We're going to push up the middle. We're going to give you that backup when you need it. But even then, he's still all by himself. He's a little bit late to the fray, but he still eventually helps out, gives them that time, and gives them a couple seconds on the clock to go and get themselves back into the board. I'm looking at now that 100-point threshold. Seeking a 30-point deficit, almost, as it sits at 99 to 137. BGSU looking to run away with this. It's BGSU right now with a 40-point advantage in this one ladies and gentlemen and I gotta be honest this is looking a lot, a lot like the map one hard point that we saw where BGSU they uh, they weren't exactly getting all the slays that they needed but they were able to play the hill a lot better than Wright State. Wright State they would get four down so many times but they would not get a lot of time and that was their big problem in map number one and if you look at the kill feed right now it's essentially the same thing nobody is positive on the side of the Falcons not one person the closest one is 18 and 18 so anytime that you are in this type of a situation we've seen the subliners do it at land in the CDL you know you don't need to slay out in order to win on this map specifically if you play your life better if you play positioning better and get the quad wipes just like this as BG as you are you're going to be setting yourself up for so much success yeah and Boca is one of those maps where you can go ahead and get carried away with killing people saying look this feels good I'm going positive let's keep it going you know that's great and all buddy but if you don't find yourself points if you don't translate those kills to time on the board it's not going to matter you're still going to find yourself falling short you're still going to find yourself losing that map and that's what it's looking like right now for right state they're not really translating a lot of these kills into time they're just going ahead looking to see if we can shove bdsu over to one side of the map and say okay well now let's go kill them again the site's right there next to you stand on it get some time you're winning these fights but you're just not really biding the time or really taking notice of your priorities to really go ahead and give yourself this map and clear things out. It's almost like they won a map five just as much as we do. <laughs> yeah, BGSU right now locking this one down 
very nicely is Hayes and Apollo. They are getting all of the hill time for their teams with Hayes having um, 148 to his name. Like, wow. Plays coming out of him as we're on with Solar. He's going to be coming through, picking up that one. They might be able to get all this scrap time, which could be massive. Solar picks up two to his name, trying to make it three. Will he be able to do that? Yes. Can he make it four? Yes. He's going to be on an unstoppable spree, ladies and gentlemen. Looking for the fifth. Will he be able to find it? He's hunting him down. There it is. That's five. Can he make it six? Keep it going. Don't let it stop here. That's going to be it. Keep it going, Solar. Send everyone out of this planet because this is your solar system right now. Most definitely is. If it, I mean, if you're the sun, you're burning everybody up right now to a crisp. You're going ahead and eviscerating them off this map. You're finding so much time for the rest of your team. You're now hitting that 200-point threshold. You are now in the home run for this map to go ahead and take it home, find yourself sitting in a 2-2 for the series, and find yourself in another SD. But Wright State looking for an answer, trying to get on that side, trying to find a couple seconds here and there. They're definitely slaying out now with two players dead for BGSU, but is it going to be enough? You see the answers come through. You see Evade still sitting around that site to some extent, but can he find the kills? Can he go ahead, have a breach, pick up the scrap time, and let the rest of his team go to that rotate? Ooh, and Evade picking up a two-piece at the right time. He's currently on a three-spree right now. Defending this barn, trying to lock it down. They are going to be rotating yet again. Now, we saw Wright State. They were getting the slays, but they were not getting the time on this hill last time. Is it going to be a repeat situation as Evade picks up two yet again? That's going to be five for him as he's going to get streaks yet again. Yeah, so, I mean, streaks are definitely going to help you here. You're on the home run now. You're on the home stretch. You're sitting at 40 seconds. You only need 37 to really close out this game so far. And they can definitely do that. Now, sitting at 35, things are still going to be tiny a bit short to go ahead and close things out. But even then, you still have a massive lead. You have so much time being bought out. You know where all these players are stationed in the middle of the map. So that should go ahead and give you that time to say, we can push up a little bit. We can grab some time, unless Neptune just has a massive answer to close things out. But instead, you two being on site, getting closed out as well. That's going to be Solar now pushing onto that side, able to hold things out for a little bit longer. 10 seconds now remaining. The rotations are going to come through here soon. You've got to be ready for it. You've got to be on the prowl. And with it being so short, literally being up that staircase, can Solar bring that momentum to the middle of the map and find a clear. And now is where every single kill matters if you are right state. You gotta be challenging this P1 with everything that you have. You can't let a lot of the scrap time on this hill go toward the Falcons because you know that you also have to rotate and set up for the spawns of P2. So it's just gonna be so difficult for right state. They're in a tough situation, but hey, if you're able to keep on slaying out like this, this is exactly what you have to do if you are right state, if you want to come back into this one because you're down by 58 and that is so hard to do when you're on this map specifically in this situation. Yeah, I mean, easily. You've got to sit there and translate every single kill to seconds, and we just haven't seen out of right state yet. And they could have done that. They could have won the game by now. Look at every single one of their players. I mean, 31, 34, 34. I mean, just absolutely fragging out. And you can see Solar with 40 and 24 looking a little Ooh. bit better, able to just go ahead and allocate those roles a little bit better, saying, look, I'll take care of the slang. We don't all need to get over Zells. We don't all need to do this. I'm already feeling myself, baby. Let me do my job, and y'all just go ahead and sit on that site. We could go ahead and close this one out with 54 seconds remaining on this clock, and you only need 10 to close out the game. Honestly, it looks like BGSU's going to be taking this one home. They've got the spawns. They've got the kill feed. They've got everything, but they don't have the point anymore. They actually left to go get some kills. So a little bit of greed coming out, but Evade's going to be able to pick up one, racking up a few more seconds here. That is going to be the glide bomb coming in. He's going to be calling out these players. They're going to be able to get taken out by Evade. That's going to be the two-piece with the glide bomb. You love to see it. Only four seconds remaining now for the Falcons to secure this one and send us to a map number five. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we all wanted to see. Yeah, we most definitely did. I mean, we wanted to see Wright State really step things up, really make it a competition. But even then, BGSU making an even better competition, saying, look, we're going to a map five. We're closing things out. We're going to hit 251st. We're going to SND on Desert Siege, baby, and I'm <laughs> hoping to see some snipers come with it.
Uh, precisely, man. That's what I'm looking for. For sure. We already saw what Neptune could do with the sniper on Berlin s &D. And now, heading over to Desert Siege. It's going to be a good one, ladies and gentlemen. We know Mick's excited about the snipers. I'm excited about the snipers. I'm sure you guys are as well. I'm excited to see who's going to be able to walk away with the dub here because both of these squads sitting at 3-1 and one right now. I mean, honestly, both of them, I cannot say enough about this series that they have given us to view already. It's been an absolutely incredible time that we've witnessed here today. Yeah, it most definitely has. I mean, looking at the stat line just for this hard point, I mean, outstanding job by everybody. I mean, everybody obviously loved to get kills. I'm sure Reich was a little bit disappointed and kind of ticked off saying, okay, I, 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 I'm kind of the butt of the joke here. I get it. Like, I'm only 17 and 40, but I mean, I was the only one getting hill time for my team, okay? I was doing what I could, and they just weren't slaying out enough. He's probably got excuses. He's got his scapegoats to be dealing with, but it doesn't matter. BGSU found themselves a lot more consistent results. You see Hayes with two minutes of hill time, sitting at 26 and 34, holding down the hill every here and there, but not consistent enough to really close the gap by a massive margin. But it all came down to Solar Six, just moving around that map so fluently with that SMG, getting that aggression that I mentioned earlier before we came into the map, just able to go ahead time in, time out, find those breaches, find those kills, find those resets, and then go ahead and just clear out the site so the rest of the team can do their job that he gave to them. Yeah, and you know, now we are heading to that fabled map five, ladies and gentlemen. You guys aren't going to want to go anywhere because we will be right back with that map five after this extremely short break. Trust me, we'll be making it quick. Don't go anywhere. Get your popcorn ready. This is going to be a great map number five three day one and we have a map five on our hands mick we're going to desert siege i love it i love it I, I, th those words alone man you have no idea how long i've been waiting for those words because i haven't in the three weeks of being here so far in all these matches i've had the opportunity and loved casting i just haven't seen desert siege and i don't think we give it enough praise i don't think these players give it enough love but finally today with Valentine's Day closely approaching, we're finally spreading the love and we're heading right over to the map I've wanted to see so desperately. Oh yeah, it's definitely fun. You know, I actually saw it last week. We saw Desert Siege Hardpoint. Not gonna be seeing that anymore. But now we're gonna be seeing it in Search and Destroy, baby. This one is going to be fun for sure. I'm excited to see who's gonna be challenging Neptune on that sniper for sure. Because I mean, hey, he pulled it out in Berlin Search, and hey, he was able to get first blood with it a couple of times on that B Street. So hey, will his fortunes be the same here? We just gotta wait and find out. Yeah, we most definitely do. And even then, Desert Siege being somewhat of a diverse pick when it comes around to just the level of kind of aggression you can bring to the map. You have those massive sniper sight lines there on the side. You have yourself a very, very contested middle of the map with so much cover to be dishing out. And honestly, I, that's why I love this map so much. There's so much that you can do. There's so many different ways you can approach a single situation that it just opens up these teams to really just flex their brains as much as possible. Say, how can we really approach this? How can we adapt? What windows do we need to watch? Where do we need to position ourselves? Where can we find this first pick and how can we manipulate that? There's just so many questions that you have to answer on the fly at every given second that it really just shows teams and just flexes them, honestly. I mean, if you go ahead and find yourself a consistent Desert Siege and you end up picking this map time in, time out, you could be a huge lead in the CCL and find yourselves an easy maps. Yeah, and Wright State, the interesting thing about them is that this year they have not dropped one search and destroy map yet. Yes, BGSU sent them to the brink when they sent them to the round 11, but at the end of the day, they have not lost one yet. So this squad in Wright State, they need to hold on to that. They say that search and destroy wins championships. Well, guess what? Search and destroy, it can win your league matches too. And you got to be able to win this one right here. This is such a big search and destroy for them, not just for this game, but for honestly the rest of the season. The winner of this one will be four and one, while the loser will be sitting at three and two. And hey, we all know that when it comes to those final seedings, that can be a massive difference in the start for your squad. Yeah, most definitely could. So you can already see the aggression going towards this A site right there towards the train tracks. And Wright State with the massive opening. Neptune finding two at the automaton. Just making the most of that long lineup, fighting the kills, and then making their job that much easier. BGSU now already, I mean, just blinking. Next thing you know, you're trying to scrap out a round. 
<laughs> yeah, Neptune, he was locking down those train tracks for sure. No player going to be challenging him as this one is going to be a quick round coming out of right state. And who knows, maybe they can start to flex their muscles right here in the search and destroy. That was a solid defensive round. I don't think that anyone dropped on the side of right state. We got to check the kill feed, but that might have been an extremely clean defensive round. Exactly what you're looking for heading to this offense. We'll see if they can start to build on this momentum is, yeah, nobody went down on the side of right. That's major. It was a flawless, and there you go. I mean, right state opening up big once again, as we saw in that last time when they were on S&D. Neptune finding three in that round and a 1v3, but this time around, BGSU definitely biting back, having an answer, finding the first blood in this one, but Paulo wants to make sure to go ahead and grab that. So right already now, being down two players. Things looking iffy, but Reich has an answer and makes it a 2v2 once again. Right now we are on with Reich, currently sitting at 1-0. Bomb is in his hands. He's going to be debating where exactly to go right now. That A site is pretty open, but obviously he doesn't know it. we got to see exactly where they're going to be able to push this one out. Because both of these players at BGSU, they're going to be relatively close to be able to get each other's backs. So you can see this player, Hayes, he's just going to be playing for the sound cues on the bomb, playing close enough where he will be able to hear it, but it is going to be an A hit that is coming out of this right squad. And this might be the right play call, because this is going to be Neptune getting control of outer. Bomb's going to start to go down. Will it be Solar that can hear it, though? Doesn't look like that's, oh yes, it's going to be the case. You can see him moving and the arrows are flying. They're going to be coming in hot, but that's going to be Neptune picking up one. It's down to a 1v1 situation. Hayes versus Neptune. Neptune dipped out, and guess what? Hayes got the word that he went over there, so is he going to go ahead and hop this bomb? Don't think that's going to be the case. Is Neptune, he's going to be looking for him. Is he going to see him? No. I think that this player in Hayes might have slipped the no line, way. and yes, that's the case. These players, they're so close to seeing each other. Oh, there it is. Hayes finally going to spot him. Neptune going to be hopping out, and he's going to be lost as he's not going to understand where he's getting shot from. As Hayes is going to be able to clutch that one up on Neptune, getting this bomb defuse. All these players in that round were so over antsy to just trying to get the kills, just trying to play aggressive, trying to make it easy, instead of just playing at that side. I mean, right state, they seem to have a post plant. They already had an exchange right off the get go when that plant went down. But I mean, at that stage, you just got to play it slow and steady. Know that you had the automaton, know that you're playing these long lineups, know that you can find that security somewhere else in the map rather than just throwing yourself into fire as much as you can or at least heating things up for yourself. I mean, I respect it. I understand trying to close out the round as quickly as possible, but goodness gracious, you got to go ahead and make your job easier because this is a game five now. You can't risk anything. Solar right now, he's going to be coming through the mid, trying to help out. He is going to be able to pick up Yutsi, as that is going to be a massive first blood coming in for Solar, but it's going to be traded out by Reich, Ooh. and he answered back with a two-piece, but Reich gets traded out, making it a 2v2 situation. Bomb is going to start to go down at B. Will this get stopped? I don't think so. Germ going to be flying through on the flank, but wow. he's going to pay for it as Hayes takes him out. Now it's all up to Neptune to clutch up the 1v2. Yeah, and even then, you got to get the defuse down as well. I mean, there's so much pressure here put on a Neptune. Able to go ahead, you got to find that first frag. you got to make sure to close your distance between that bomb first off and foremost. So you can already see him making a move to the outside of the map. Going to run into Apollo here fairly soon, and you do get the peek there on that little rear peeking out. But, I mean, do you make the move? Do you make that cut? Do you find yourself the aggression? Do you know if you're walking into a crossfire? You never know until you take the shots, and there you go. Hayes being the last man alive inside that site, being so close to the bomb, being ready for that. You've got to go ahead and be ready for the fake. You've got to be able to take that X off immediately. No other player's going to put the pressure on. There it is. Hayes brings the aggression, puts on the shots, and finds BGSU another round. Yeah, now only four rounds away from securing victory. I know BGSU, they're going to be looking to hand this right squad their first loss. Let's not forget, right was, were down 5-3 to three in the first search and destroy and ended up pulling off three rounds in a row to end up winning it so i mean honestly right i'm never going to be counting them out in this one right here the question is will they be able to capitalize on this side right here right now i want to see it happen as we are going to be on with uc currently one and two bomb is going to be in his hands as well as he's going to be able to pick off one no the player does scurry on by but he is going to be cleaning him up as evade is going to be falling evade now struggling in this search and destroy sitting at one and four 
Ooh, and there it is. A second one out of the right state. German able to find a clean kill as well. So, I mean, now looking at a 4v2, this is a massive disparity for right state to really just take advantage of and manipulate. I mean, you can already see Solar in the back once again running that sniper rifle. Not being the player to really make that huge differential. you got to get on the outside. you got to find that first blood. You have to make that difference and find another weapon to pick up. Otherwise, you're going to be almost irrelevant for the rest of this match unless you can just go off with a pistol. But we see the quick scope try to come out just a little bit over there to the right. Instead, you got to make that pressure. you got to go ahead, find yourself, get closer to that defuse. But with so many players scattered about, a 1v4 with the bomb down, this could almost be impossible, but we got to see something wrecked. I mean, 1v4, bomb down with a sniper and an, if you clutch that one up, it probably would have been one of the greatest plays in Call of Duty we've ever seen. And hey, I don't think that that'll be happening right there in that situation specifically. So hey, Neptune, he's going to be able to lock him down and take him out. Now we're heading into this next round five where things are all even at two apiece, baby. I mean, most of course. I mean, you already see a great start, a great even out for both these sides. You see a 2-2. Two, two. You see now BGSU wants to get on the aggression. And they've had themselves a pretty good record when it comes around to this attacking side. They're able to go ahead, find the first couple picks, then get that bomb down, then just play a really good reset, play a good post plant, know the right place and times, and there you go. An amazing first shot at a solar. Just go ahead and save his teammate's life. Thing is, can they make the read? Do they know that player's going to be there on the left? And they go ahead and double swing it, or do they go by themselves and run right into the jaws of the shark? Right now, the bomb is going to be down, and it's planted at the B site. You can see already down, so 4v3 advantage coming in for BGSU. So we're on with Solar. As Buddy Hayes is able to pick up a kill. Only two remaining for the side of right now. As we are on with Reich, he's able to pick up one, and he's going to hop on the bomb. Now the question is, is Neptune going to be able to distract, or are they going to be able to get him off? And yes, they are going to be able to sniff out the sneak defuse. Not going to be coming in. Hayes challenging Neptune, taking him out. BGSU going up 3-2. to two. BGSU's offense is looking really good on this map. I'm not even going to lie. I mean, the way they find themselves some really good first picks, they go ahead, get aggressive off the get-go, don't get too overly aggressive. And even if they do, they find it collectively. They don't go ahead and get one man getting overzealous. The rest of them just gone ahead and left with scraps saying, look, you just put us in a 3v4, man. What are you doing? Like, why are you making our job harder? I, I get it. We're better slayers overall, but, I mean – we can't go ahead and have this translate and really throw away this game because that's what we did last time in the SD. I mean, it's such a massive map. We get a little mm -hmm. bit over antsy here and there, but even then, you already see once again towards the outside, you see some kind of presence there. But can you find any kills to really translate that over and find yourself around? Wow, yeah, and he is literally smelling this player's smelly socks right now as he is right on the other side of the wall from him. Just an un unsuccessful angle wow he can't even see his weapon that is so close he has no idea is he just gonna hop in here and check it that that, that would be pretty interesting oh as a player is gonna scurry on by he's gonna spot him flash is gonna be stun is gonna be coming out though and now jeremy's gonna be rotating around over top toward b there is gonna be a player directly below him still a 4v4 situation though is right state right now they're looking to find some type of offensive pressure some type of opening somewhere and maybe germ will be able to find it as he's gonna be going on this flank and i like it going up top he is able to go right on top of a player's head he's not gonna be able to hear him at all germ making the play coming in big with the flank he's able to get one and he's oh! able to get two on the stairs germ doing them dirty saying go ahead get the wipes get the hands sanitizer because you're gonna need to clean up something because i'm on the map and i'm a problem you gotta deal with me i'm in your flank he's taking out all these players left right and center 3v2 advantage coming in for right he's gonna be looking for a third right now to his name as this bomb's gonna be going down there you go with almost nine seconds left on the clock a little bit too late of a plant there germ finally gets taken down so does the less of the right state raider so you already see bgsu knowing that the game was going a little bit too slow there. A lot of pressure being put onto the field saying, look, it's nine seconds. They're all going to put something together, guarantee themselves a plant. One of our players stick back, play slow, play steady, find yourself that last kill and get ourselves the defuse. I mean, honestly, it, that all came down to right side just being extremely slow to that plant. I mean, it just once you go ahead and play things, and once you're sitting at that final 10-second mark, every single player of a team, you're going to see a full push. You're going to see them trying to guarantee a bomb plant. And that just really just messes with everybody's head saying, okay, well, this is our biggest priority. Who cares if somebody comes from behind? If we get the bomb down, that's not how that works. you got to do it earlier. One player is going to stay behind. Somebody's going to take that safe route. and Somebody's going to guarantee that round, even if things do go south with those trades. And, I mean, we just didn't see Wright State being prepared for it. 
and evade right now currently sitting at five and four started off one and four though so he's going to be on this four spree is an early trade going to be coming out but that's going to be three going down and the last one up is going to be evade so right they're able to answer back as they are going to be getting this defuse as well Reich sitting at six and four on a two spree this one's four to three ladies and gentlemen and now it's dangerous territory if you are bgsu because you already know that right they've came back on you from a five three deficit and so now you know even if bgsu wins this round to go up five three they're not going to be feeling that good about it they've got to stay composed right here right now and right here right say they have to make the adjustments they have to be ready for whatever's coming to them and you know that bomb's right there in the middle of the map you know they're going to push up to that double door they're going to push that house that castle there in the center just go ahead ads on it have all four of your players just stationed onto that i mean watch it here i mean i could be incorrect but you would see at least see one player trying to push up there instead neptune finding that first frag so a great way to open up the round you see you getting traded out so i mean not as big of a deal as you wanted not the best case scenario because I mean, you'd see not really doing all that shabby in this game so far. So you're kind of happy if, any, if anybody, it's him. But Germ, still alive and well, able to find one as well, making that a, now a 3v2 in the favor of Wright State. Yeah, Germ just went off. That trade was, that kill was absolutely massive coming in for him as he's going to be on a three spree now. Currently sitting at nine and four for his squad, and that's going to be Neptune picking up another kill. It's going to be Evade left in the 1v3. We've seen some crazy things happen, ladies and gentlemen. Will it happen now? Is the bomb going to be planted at this A site? No. He's going to be getting shut down as Wright State Raiders. They're taking us four to four, ladies and gentlemen. We're only a couple rounds away from that map five, round 11. Even then, we're only at least one round off from that match point for one side. So that's what it comes down to. Who's going to find that pressure? Who's really going to go ahead and put the ball in the other side's court to say, take this shot? I mean, you have to make it now. Otherwise, if you go ahead and mess up at all, we're finding ourselves a free dub. Because regardless of which side really gets there, we're seeing a 2-2 in the series. We're on map five right now. Every single mistake matters. Every single advantageous point, every first frag is that much more important. You really can't slip it out of your grasp too easily. So uh, with a very, very slow clear here in the middle of the map for BGSU, right state had just completely given up the middle of the map. So, I mean, almost you can find yourself a massive positioning for BGSU if you just play this smart enough. Yeah, and same with Wright State. They can just swarm and absolutely overtake them as all these players at BGSU are essentially stacked completely on top of each other just in different variations. So will Wright State be able to pinch this? We got to find out. Yes, Germ going to be picking up the big first blood. That could be massive. Bomb's going to be going down at B. Now we got to see his evade. He's going to be the last one alive for his squad as now he's going to need to clutch it up against Wright State, and I don't think that's going to be the case, but he is able to pick up two. Here we go. 1v2 situation now, and he's able to pick up the third. He spots the fourth. Oh, but Wright State, they already got it. Oh, Wright State able to get that one. Five to four advantage now coming in for them. I mean, you saw the pressure there. You saw the defuse coming through. You knew the player allocation was everywhere across the map. You saw that two frag earlier to make it a 1v4. So, I mean, things were not looking very good for BGSU there. I mean, you had to pull off almost a miracle. You had to get over aggressive. You had to be watching that bomb. Sure, you want to go ahead, get a little bit uh, creative with your approach. I understand yeah. that. But you got to do it quicker. You've got to go ahead and be on that bomb because knowing the double stack they had there, they had a defending player, which didn't end up there in the end really mattering all that much. But then again, the bomb was already defused. So as you see the move coming out from right state, now being on the attacking side, having the bomb in hand, it all comes down to whether or not we can see him grab that first shot, that first blood. And there you go. Instead, it goes to BGSU. The likes of Germ able to go ahead and fall. It's going to be a massive pick coming in for Apollo right now. And hey, that last round, extremely unfortunate for sure for the side of BGSU as they weren't able to get him off the bomb in time. And now with Reich, bomb in his hands, he's trying to make a play happen, but that's going to be extremely hard as now it is a 2v4 situation. And unless Reich and Utsi are going to be making magic happen, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be seeing a round 11 map number five. One round to decide it all as Utsi is going to be dropping. Reich's going to be dropping, and that is it. It has been fabled. This is where champions are made, ladies and gentlemen. 5-5 five, five, BGSU. Will they be able to clutch it up? That's a darn good question. And that's a darn good thing that's going to have to be answered in this final round, as you can already see there on the board. It comes down to who can really make the adjustments, who's gone ahead and taken enough notes over the course of this game to say, look, 
how are things going to pan out? How can we make these adjustments? How can we really stand out? And even then, we've mentioned the entire of this game so far. I mean, Avain Ooh. sitting there saying, look, I mean, he, you've been a captain for this long. I mean, you've been in these scenarios before. And how do we approach this? How do we make these moves? How do we stand out? How do we go ahead and really go ahead and win this game? And well, how does it come down to that first if one? Eight, if eight has the glide bomb, I was going to say perfect timing. They got the glide bomb and they have the bomb being planted. So now it's a 4v4 situation as the glide bomb isn't able to connect on anyone. So we can see Apollo right now. He's going to be hanging out on the outskirts now on with Hayes. He's going to be watching this up top hop up. And guess what? He's going to get challenged and taken oh. out as Germ. Going to be able to pick up one, but he gets traded. That's going to be another one dropping for right. And guess what? BGSU, they've got the advantage. They've got the bomb down. It's going to be magic coming out of Neptune and UT if they want to clutch this one up. As you can see right now, UT is able to pick up one. They are going to be able to pick up two. Oh! Now it's down to a 1v1 situation. Evade versus UT. A couple of seconds left. Is he on the bomb? Is he going to be able to kill him off in time? Yes, he is. And the BGSU Falcons are going to be able to clutch up when it matters the most, winning the round 11 map five. That's all it came down to. Looking at that clock, biting out your time, knowing when to pick and knowing when not to. And you see eight seconds on that clock, you're saying, it takes seven to defuse. So let's go ahead. Let's pick this man. He's going to have to put his gun down. And if he wins Ooh. that gunfight, who cares? I still come out on top. BGSU still takes home map five. And they take home this entire series right there on round 11. E okay. I just want to say Evade put the entire team on his back this yeah latter half of this of this of this game he started off this game one and four ladies and gentlemen one and four he finished 13 and two from that point on from the time we called him out he finished 13 and two and finished with the most damage in the lobby that is the definition of turning around your performance believing in yourself and that is exactly what i wanted to see coming out of this bgsu squad finally able to hand right state their first loss of search and destroy on the entire season and they did it when it mattered the most and that's all it comes down to can you go ahead and step up in those scenarios can you find yourself saying look i'm tired of being stomped on i'm tired of us losing because of stupid mistakes how much are you going to step up how much are you going to make that differential and if they finally go ahead and biting down and saying look i'll do it if i got to you got germ you got neptune on the side of right state just stepping up being very consistent 10 and 7 12 and 7 finding the shots time in and time out i mean most of those being non-traded kills bgsu finally saying look we are over this i don't care what happens keep the bait alive set up those crosses set up those fires where if he goes ahead and gets in a fight make sure he stays alive because the rest of us can't really accomplish what he does and there you go something like that an eight streak alone that really gives yourself enough of a confidence Ooh. boost to really close out a game yeah as he got 10 non-traded kills that time evade was doing it all literally the definition of his name being able to get those kills and dip on out of there man what a play coming in from evade there to clutch up the ice in his veins it was definitely there listen listen people we have been seeing some amazing matches going down on this stream that's all i gotta say if you guys have been tuning in it is absolutely incredible what we've been with witnessing man and i'm blessed to be able to be here and cast it alongside you mick i know that the fans are going to be wanting to see what we've got in store next though i mean i can't agree anymore and even then they're going to be welcomed by the likes of seymour to come up here with this um next match we got coming I don't want to keep it a surprise or anything because, I mean, you could obviously see it there in the pregame. It's going to be Oklahoma State against uh, another another newcomer here in the CCL. Another good team that we've seen so far, and that's going to be McPherson, both sitting at 3-1. So even then, with these two teams right here, both sitting at 3-1 and, and really just dishing it out tonight for a third seed, we're going to see a repeat of that kind of series once again. Maybe not a map five, but at least enough pressure to really fight for their position here on the ladder board. But... And that'll all be here next after we find ourselves going to a break, closing out this series, thanking everyone here for the night, at least for this series. And congratulations to BS BGSU for closing it out and able to step things up when it really matters. For sure, man. Shout out to this squad, man. It's been a pleasure casting this one. He's been Mick. I've been Rome. This one was an absolute treat. And we will see you guys very shortly after this short break.